So with that, I guess we'll get started. Hi, I'm Steve Thompson, president of Emory Thompson Machine. And Jeff, want to introduce yourself? I'm Jeff. Mark Allen. <laughs> Formerly of Mystic Isis. Right. Oh, it's like Ice pulling, cream. It's like pulling tights. At the <laughs> Tight. It's like pulling tights also. And Christy Brown, who is uh, vice president of sales and marketing. <laughs> and you want to say a word or two? No, you covered it. All right, Christy has a new book out that we'll talk about later that is absolutely beautiful and has stories about the history of Emory Thompson, as I recalled it. Uh, so some of them uh, may sound like fairy tales, but they're true. So we're going to uh, make some ice cream and ices, and you're doing a gelato today, too? Mm -hmm. We're yeah. going to do a lot of different things. Uh, and uh, as I uh, emphasize, uh, please ask questions. Uh, and oh, and when you have a question, put up your hand. We'll acknowledge that we saw you, and then we'll get right back to you if we're in the middle of a subject. All yours, Christy. It's Jeff. No, all Jeff's. Jeff's. Go for it. Okay. All right. You can leave. Thank you. No, we'll be right over here. Okay. Uh, first thing we're going to make today, uh, you have your sheets. It is hazelnut crunch, formerly known as hazelnut cream crunch, uh, but now it's hazelnut crunch. Okay? All right. Uh, the first thing we're going to put into, this is a 24-quart machine, and we're going to make a half batch. So normally in a 24-quart machine, you would use a whole bladder, which is 10 quarts of cream. Uh, so we're going to use... Good girl. That's why you're in the front row. Five quarts of cream. Uh, in the machine. Uh, we could make a full batch, but we'll make a half. That's fine. Okay, that's enough for everybody. Yeah. Uh, the recipe for this precisely is in, in a 12, in a half batch, 24 quart machine, it will be uh, five quarts of mix or cream or whatever. Uh, five ounces of vanilla, 53 ounces of Nutella, four ounces of sweetened chocolate powder, and then we'll throw Oreos in for kicks. Okay? That'll make Ken happy. That'll make you happy, Ken. <laughs> All right, so we have four, how many quarts? Come on. Okay. Five. Uh, a little a trick, you know, all these measuring things have the measures on one side. Uh, a little tip is to turn it around away from you, and that way it's easy to read as you're pouring rather than trying to bend down and look at it. Oh, what a great tip, Jeff. Oh, you're welcome. And it works. It works. I use that to make coffee now in the morning. I'm half blind and uh, in the morning and I, the can water, see, the, I can see through the pot and get the water just right. It's pretty good. It is. It's a good tip. All right. Make sure your gate is closed. Otherwise, uh, you're mopping. Guilty. Ooh, tough crowd. <laughs> All right. So we'll pour this in the machine. Now, when you're pouring stuff into the machine, just a little tip, the higher you go, the easier it is to a point. Mike, is my mic on? Yes. Okay. What happens, Jeff, if you uh, take that container and put it right on the lip? This is a planned Com uh, a commercial, right? It's not a plant commercial, but no. Okay, if you do, then what happens is what Steve usually does is he puts it here and it winds up here. <laughs> oh, tough crowd today. <laughs> All right, then we'll add, uh, we'll add four ounces of sweetened chocolate powder. I like to turn the machine on to get everything mixing as we're doing it. The machine. Okay. Batch freezer. Okay. I'm just saying like the part. Oh, the spout. Okay. 
or the throat, spout, throat. It's kind of like Carter buggy. <laughs> And then we'll put the Nutella in, which has been softened uh, with a little microwave action to make it easy to pour. <laughs> See how easy that is? <laughs> I told you it would get cool as it sat. You know, you didn't listen. So now we'll have to help it with a little... <laughs> Just talk amongst yourselves while I'm doing this. It was a lot easier than scooping it. <laughs> okay, this should pour easily because it's really hot. Ah. Does that have any, anybody have questions so far? I hear some mumbling <laughs> over here. Yes. Christy? What's it's, the question? It's not super hot like he was saying it is. It's on the warmer side. Now, obviously, microwaves heat from outside in. Thanks. Uh, so this is uh, a lot warmer than what's on the inside. So heating up peanut butter and Nutella, that's okay. But don't put something that you're cooked off of the stove. Like a lot of people try to cook a mix or try to cook something down and then pour it straight into the machine because that's not good to do. But if it's, you know, room temp or warm, that's okay to do. My, my how about over here? I seen this guy yesterday. He poured that stuff in a jug with stuff in it and used a drill and mixed it up real dirty. <laughs> that's 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 what uh, you know. He does. I bet that's probably where you got it from, huh? Uh, the reason we did that in class is because we used a full tub, which is 106 ounces. Because we're using a half batch, we're needing 53 ounces. So 53 ounces was two of these bottles. And because I don't have my drill with me to mix it properly, I thought we would heat it up in the microwave and then pour it in the machine, which does a, a very good job of mixing. Okay? <laughs> I thought you guys were gonna be butt-handed about it. I ground up, I chopped up some Oreos, a package of Oreos, and we'll add those in. The whole package? Well, I'm not putting that part in. <laughs> Just the contents. Okay. Uh, and we can also, by the way, start the machine now, right? Start the, uh, what's it called? The refrigeration. The refrigeration. Christy, what'd you do with my spatula? I rinsed it. I'll tell you, the help here. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, Jeff has a class. It's on the back of his shirt. It says uh, Mystic Ice Cream Boot Camp. And that's for two days uh, prior to this class. And it runs at the greatest level of high efficiency, just like we do. Right, Jeff? Well, I don't know if it runs at high efficiency. <laughs> but... We have several graduates of the class this week sitting right here. Two, four, six. All right, so we'll add the, we'll turn on the refrigeration over here. And if you listen, you'll hear the compressor start up uh, as soon as we do it. And then as soon as the compressor starts up, this is a water-cooled machine. So you have a flow of water coming into it to cool the motor, just like your car. And then you have one coming out and it comes out into the sink here so after we hear the compression it's just a habit i always look to make sure the water is flowing so listen and you'll hear the compressor that's pretty loud that's good 
and now the water should be flowing freely 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 oh boy somebody didn't do their job is it on no can you get it oh it's the coming out the Steve. floor <laughs> all right it's on uh well actually it's on the floor okay steve yes it's on the floor i see that okay okay mike can you uh you uh, want to turn the cut. refrigeration on again cut. no we can't do that we're live uh we're live yeah let's try that again well hold it's going to come out on the floor here it shouldn't that was the one that i turned on oh uh. okay now let's see if it's right and there it is see even the most rehearsed shows have their problems so what was coming out on the floor that was another water valve that i turned on by accident ah uh, had nothing to do with this they don't let me touch iphones or water valves or printers or, or printers all right that's enough yeah. <laughs> all right so okay. so now we'll add the aria <laughs> You wouldn't have it any other way, right? Okay, the, the question was, uh, the discharge water, if you didn't have a sink nearby, would it pump it away? Yes, it's under partial pressure, so that uh, if my sink or my drain, my indirect waste, was in the bathroom next door in the other room. I can literally go up the side of the wall, over the ceiling, and back down to, to it again. And because it's under enough city water pressure to do that. Yes? Do you know how much it, it uh, puts out? Approximately a half a gallon of water a minute, depending on your actual water temperature. Your water temperature in Alaska in the winter is going to be uh, much colder than Saudi Arabia uh, in the summer. Those are extreme. Right. It could have been Maine and Florida. They could have. <laughs> could have been Secaucus and uh, Englewood. That's correct. Uh, Newark and Flatbush. Uh, okay, so that's hazelnut crunch. Uh, just so you know, uh, the third flavor I'll be making today is something I've never uh, played with. It's uh, saffron. And I ordered, it comes in these little little bottles uh, which are uh, pricey as you know saffron is pricey. this is hundred and fifty dollars so while we may not make this ice cream routinely I thought we'll give it a shot you know it's good. we'll see so oh so that brings me back to the fact that what I did was I came in early this morning and I ground it up and uh, infused it in some of the mix, the cream. And this is what it, and then I heated it up in the microwave to start the melding process. And that's what we'll be adding to the ice cream later today. I thought it would sit out here and have it saturate the liquid. Uh, I've never dealt with this before. Okay. But like other spices, is that how you get the flavor? I really don't use spices in ice cream. Cinnamon? No. Cinnamon, just shake it right out. But this stuff, for some reason, I felt that it, it, well, I researched it, and they say that you should infuse it uh, somehow. They didn't tell me how. So I just, mmm. Uh, well, that's not happening. Oh, that's because that's not the top of the box. It's over here. So anyway, if you want to look at this, you can. Uh, and they tell you to add uh, cardamom. Cardamom? Cardamom. I like that word. Cardamom. It's cardamom. So I added some cardamom to it. And now this is sitting here. And what we'll do is we'll add... And I don't know if we have too much or not, 
when I was doing it this morning, Mike said, now don't add a lot, but I went and added the whole thing. Uh, we'll see. Hey, you don't like it, you know, throw it out. So we'll see. That'll be later today. Uh, and we'll add just some nuts to it, and then we'll have it. So there you go. So that's later. Uh, any other questions? Yes. So is that, is that the No, that's the uh, 24 quart. The uh, floor models are 12 and 24. They're identical in size, except the 12, the barrel is that wide and the 24 is that wide, and the price difference between the two is minimal. This is the CB350 over here. That's the largest selling machine in the world. And uh, over here is the 200, which I just took out of the line. There you go. That makes three quarts. How long does it take to have that? Eight minutes, uh, approximately. It depends on the flavor you're making because if you're making a high sugar content product like salted caramel, the extra sugar, the more sugar in the product, the longer the freezing time. So uh, salted caramel might be 10, Whoa. 11 minutes. That's good. Uh, Anybody else for Jeff? Question? Okay. Uh, well, just can you tell us a little bit of the difference between the two, the two just as a side versus the That's about it. Uh, this is going to make 24 quarts of finished product, and this is going to make six quarts of finished no, product. No, this one will make six. Sorry, over here. Yeah, six quarts. So this is four times bigger than this. And, and that, they work the same way. But that becomes important nowadays because labor costs are going through the roof. And you've got a machine that lasts on average 40 years. So if you can make four times as much product with the same labor, you're paying for one hour of labor, you're getting uh, four times as much out of this as you are here. So your factors are how much do you want to spend and uh, how much ice cream do you need? What I tried to express to the class this week is the total simplicity of this process. Uh, Aside from all the, the, the silly jokes and uh, other than that, what we're doing is we're pouring the cream base into the machine and some Nutella, Oreos if you want, and that's it. Um, it's really a, a very simple process. We're ready? Yeah. Well, we have to open the handle. What'd she ask? Yeah, it doesn't come out automatically. Automatically? What? How do you well, define that? I took your cue and said, yeah, you have to open the <laughs> Here's the automatic way to, to get it out. Put your hand here and lift. And there it is. That was fast. Ooh, that was fast. And now I'll turn it over to our leader she will dish it out and you'll try it won't you yes okay and we'll try it pretty it, oh, by the way the reason it comes out ingenious why it comes out so fast is that the barrel inside we talked about this the the barrel where all this is being made is canted five degrees and that it's tilted down five degrees and that just shoots it out it may not seem like much now but when you're doing a run and you have to make five six eight flavors and you want to get home that helps it's also the um uh, the design of the dasher it sure uh, is which is to push <laughs> the product out too yes this is a stupid question that so you're obviously going to put like um, whatever you're going to put in your freezer underneath there to catch it with a five gallon bucket or something that you would, because I don't know anything about this, that you can put in your display freezer. Right? Yeah, we're using two and a half gallon buckets or gelato pans. Okay. That's, so you, is that what you use typically? Then you just put them in a freezer or display freezer to serve? You take it from here and put it into a hardening freezer overnight okay. uh, at, ten, at least 10 below. And then tomorrow, you could either take it out and put it in your serving cabinet, 
or you could leave it in there for uh, weeks on end. Okay, so it stays in the Harvey freezer at least overnight, but yeah. you can leave it in there. You can leave it if, if all of a sudden a hurricane comes through, or a typhoon, or okay. anything like that, <laughs> and the weather's going to be bad for three days, leave it in the hardening cabinet, it won't deteriorate. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? I'll just show you one trick that uh, Christy, uh, I'd been pulling ice cream like Jeff for many, many years. But Christy came up with this trick. I want to show it to you. Uh, this is set for homemade like Jeff just made. I'm starting it up. Now, you won't actually see anything. But when Jeff lifted the handle, that ice cream came out very fast. What if I wanted to fill pint containers? Well, in the old days, you had to be like that and like that and like that. Christy comes along and looks at me like I'm strange from Mars and says, why don't you just speed it, uh, slow it down? So instead of maximum speed, I'm going to cut it down to about a quarter. So now by opening it, it's coming out much slower and I have a little more time to fill my pints and put up another one just because it's not being pushed out as fast. If you're doing production, you want those pints out quick, then you speed it up. I can even be running at a slow speed. Let me just take it down to gelato. And I'm just going to let you hear the difference. This is a gelato speed. It's quite slow. Now here's maximum speed for homemade, and it's going to push it out faster. You can hear the RPMs, the speed of the drive. So why, why that's, we want less air in the gelato, or we want less air in the frozen custard. Super Premium has less air. Uh, I adjust the air for dairy free. Uh, and this is a unique invention of mine uh, that's now coming up on 23 years old. So that's a little that's good, trick right? for filling yeah. pipes and quarts. You don't have to go buy some $3,000 special cover. All you do is just slow the drive down. How's that product? It's delicious. Uh, a question I've got into asking is, what would you change on it if you could? I know what I would change. I'd put more in my cup. Uh, can I have some? There you go. Oh, thank you. I need to take a stack for it. It's thick and rich and creamy with a lot of flavor. I think it's good. So, oh, Jeff, that's great. It is good. Yeah. Ooh. A little more crunch. Could you add more halfway through the process so it doesn't break them up as much after it's kind of already starting to harden up? Yeah, she convinced me to chop them up beforehand and put them in. Otherwise, you would have had more crunchies in there. And, and what if you put like real nuts in there? Is that allowable? Well, let's let's allowable. Or can it go in the machine? Okay. Sure. Okay. Mm. Sure. Mm. You can Just put more expensive probably. More expensive? Yeah. We don't worry about that. When you're in this business, the last thing you worry about is how much it costs to make your ice cream. Okay. Right? 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 Okay. Because you're going to make it back in the form of long lines of people because your product is far superior to anybody else's. And you're just, never going to get a flavor like this from Briars. Just one last thing. When you're shopping for your ingredients, uh, and I'm a big proponent of going supermarket shopping, whether that means Sam's Club, Costco, Restaurant Depot, Walmart, your local supermarket, just make sure to buy the best. Don't buy Schmorios, buy real Oreos. <laughs> I'm still looking for the Schmorios. Uh, ask my wife, she'll find them. <laughs> she'll find great value Schmorios. Oh boy. Okay. Um, you asked about throwing and having larger pieces. Um, when I make, say, Oreo cookie Italian ice, I throw one bag of my Oreo cookies into the machine, and the second bag, while it's running, I'm taking each Oreo cookie and I'm snapping it between each cookie between my thumbs to break into about four pieces. And then I have them in a container, and then when I want to uh, add the pieces, because I've got the fruit flavor in the machine, Blindfolded, what is this? This is Oreo cookie Italian ice. Take off the blindfold, it's this beautiful chocolatey brown, but you know, where are the Oreos? You know, where's the beef? So uh, I open the gate part way, and as it's coming out slower, or I can slow down the infinite overrun, I'm throwing in my pieces of cookie. 
so that when you look at the uh, Oreo cookie Italian ice, which if you haven't heard of that, is the greatest flavor going. Uh, when you're looking at it and eating it, you've got the flavor of the Oreo cookie in the ice, and you've got the pieces for identity. Yeah, I can see, we eat with our eyes, I can see that's Oreo cookie. And that's a great combination, half in the machine, half out. Don't try this with any other machine on the market, you can't do it. You, their openings are so small because they want to protect their flimsy dashers, uh, beaters. They're so small that you can't get anything down there except a powder. We're going to take whole cookies and dump them in. We're going to take walnuts, pecans, uh, candy, gummy bears, anything can go in. You're up. We are up. You don't have to break everything up. Let the machine do it. We're going to do chocolate raspberry gelato. If you could just take one and pass it down. That's the formula already out for you. Now, I have not working with jam before, but you have worked with jam before, yeah? Yes, yeah. All right, well, this will be a new for me. So if you want to write this down, also it will be in the video. Uh, Christie's we'll chocolate raspberry gelato formula for a CB350, the smaller machine here is three and a half quarts of the dairy blend which consists of milk, cream, sugar, uh, skim milk powder uh, and flavor. Uh, three and a half quarts of dairy mix, six ounces of Forbes chocolate powder, Benjamin P. Forbes chocolate, that's at our website under key suppliers, 54 ounces of raspberry jam, which kind of jam did you buy? Red raspberry jam. I mean, oh, brand. Smuckers. Smuckers. <laughs> Smuckers is great stuff. And one ounce of vanilla extract. Did you put vanilla extract in that? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay, it didn't call for it? Yeah. Oh, but we forgot it. Correct. Okay. <laughs> so we say that many ounces of jam, but we're not for sure yet. Um, that 54 ounces is for three of these. I'm going to put two. going to do a little Jeff thing, let it run, taste it, see if I get chocolate and raspberry. Let that jam mix up with the mix and the chocolate, and then we go from there. So you might have to scratch out of that if we like it at the, the two. All right, how many ounces of chocolate? Six. Didn't Jeff have one open? Didn't you have an ounce, a bag of chocolate open? Yes, right on the shelf. I'll use that one. Right behind the sugar. Got it. Sugar. Honey. <laughs> Thanks, doll. No problem, hon. That was a great flavor, Jeff. So six That's ounces? Good. That's that would sell. That doesn't need yeah. coffee in it. Uh, um, in it. What? Half? No. No, it was fine. On that half batch, so how much does that make? Like six quarts? Or twelve? A full batch will make six gallons. Oh, six gallons. Okay. All right. So, so that makes three gallons. Okay. Right. Ooh. All right. It's like powdered sugar. The thing when you work with chocolate powders, um, immersion blenders are best, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. And it'll take me a good little minute. <laughs> this is a Forbes chocolate powder. Forbes to me makes the best powders uh, for making any type of chocolate. Um, you know, you should have a data sheet in there, and then of course, uh, Cherish's contact is on that formula that I had given to you, so I would definitely reach out to Cherish. Um, they're a great company, they've been around for a very, 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 very long time, and they make the best chocolates. We don't have to blend this completely because the machine does most of it, but we're just going to get it all nice and in there. Okay. Step one, make sure your gate's closed. I'm very guilty of that. I've done it at my house many times. <laughs> All right, and then keep it up high. I think Jeff just poured his chocolate powder right into the machine, didn't he? Yeah, I don't, it gets messy. I don't like doing that. All right. Yeah, so we're going to go, nope, so we're going to make a gelato. So we're going to go make ice cream, 
gelato and start. We're not going to turn on the refrigeration because we're going to add our jam. I don't have a spatula. No. That won't fit. <laughs> Let me wash this. Super premium ice cream is usually 65% over. 65. Yeah. So is there a way, how do you know that for sure? Is there a way to, to either weigh the ice cream or like how do you know for sure that you're making that? The easiest way is to uh, calculate how much total uh, liquid went into the machine and then uh, percentage it to, and it'll tell you what the percentage is. Uh, they do sell something called an overrun scale. I spent the first half of my life making those things cheap. Uh, because they didn't have the infinite overrun control. But, uh, so they're not working. So Christy's putting in the jam. And that's... You guys wanted more texture? I can see you putting in um, some fresh raspberries. Let's give it a, you can, I don't like putting any frozen fruits because they're going to stay frozen and when you bite into a solid, it's really hard to bite into. I taste the raspberry. Interesting. And see, I got this from a uh, a Ghirardelli little chocolate square chocolate raspberry. I think I'm going to go ahead and start it. So, what? <laughs> oh, we need to put vanilla in an ounce, right? One ounce? Yeah, you don't do an ounce per quart like you do. So why are you measuring it? You know what an ounce looks like. Why not measure? That's how you make formulas precise, Joe. I don't know. Emerald doesn't measure ounces. So we only used two jars of 18 ounces. So that's what, 36? 36, 36 ounces of jam. So you want to change your formula to 36. That way you get, if, I, if you measure, you're going to get the same flavor every single time when you go to make it the next time. Jeff, you know, I, Jeff doesn't measure, and that's okay. That's how Jeff likes to do it. Um, I like to measure everything I do. That and my mother was a baker, so kind of have to. Does anybody have any specific questions? No. So, so what's the speed of the machine making this? This is on gelato setting. So everybody, does everybody know what overrun is? I think I heard Jeff talk or Steve talk about it. So overrun is the amount of air content. The faster the dasher spins, the more air it's putting into your product. The slower the dasher spins, the less air it's putting into your product. So we're running this pretty low, so we're running this about 140 RPMs. Homemade ice cream, what Jeff was running is 234 RPMs, so it's a big difference. So Jeff's, you know, typically that's what everybody makes is homemade ice cream because you're doubling your yield. So an example, you put five quarts of mix, you're gonna get 10 quarts of product back out. You run it with gelato, I put in three and a half quarts of mix, I'm probably going to get four and a half, maybe five quarts of mix back out. So that's why, or product back out, that's why you go to a gelato shop, it's more expensive than going to a homemade ice cream shop, because you're not getting your full yield back out. And that, and it doesn't melt as fast, you know, it's, it's nice and thick and creamy. Because it's got a high sugar content, this will take a little bit longer to freeze, just like Jeff did. Well, right now you're at two minutes, so you're probably going to look around 13 to 15 minutes. Now, also keep in mind your very first batch of the day. So this was the machine's first batch. It's going to take longer. This is this machine's... Yes? 
Uh, because the machines are different sizes, do they freeze faster or slower? Will a product be made faster in the smaller machine? No. So to finish the first question, <laughs> um, I forgot what the first question was. Thanks, Jeff. Anyway, no, they don't freeze. One doesn't freeze faster than the other just because one is smaller and one is bigger. It's the both, you know, they're both going to run the same, function the same. They're both going to make ice cream, vanilla ice cream in eight to nine minutes. Oh, it was uh, the startup. So when you very first run your machine for the day, so let's say Jeff was to make these batches back to back to back to back to back. So his first batch is going to take quite a little bit longer, a couple minutes, three, four minutes longer than the next one. And then the, the more the machine runs because it's so nice and cold, the faster it's going to freeze. Now, it's not going to go all the way to freeze in two minutes, but it'll, it'll start holding, you know, at freezing it constantly at 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes versus your very first batch at 15, an example. Um, so the higher the sugar content, the longer it's going to take to freeze. So that's why we say vanilla can take eight minutes, chocolate raspberry, which is jam is sugar, chocolate is sugar, this had nothing but sugar the one that you just ate prior. So that's just gonna constantly, you know, take longer to freeze. And that's just science. You can't get around science. That's a good question. So she asked if you make the chocolate ice cream, can you go right into making the next batch? Yes and no. So if you were to make another type of chocolate product in either one of these machines, yes, you can. If you're going to go from like an example, the next one this is going to make is an Italian ice, no. You're going to want to rinse this thoroughly. I think Jeff is going to make a very berry. He's going to want to rinse that a couple times to get some of that chocolate out. You know, you don't want to get that mixed in. If you were to, an example, we have a banana split. If we would have started with banana split and then did the chocolate, you can do that without rinsing in between. Always start with your lightest flavors and then work your way down to your darkest. Or if you're working with like a prominent flavor, like an example, mint chip. Mint chip is a light color. It's green, but it's very strong and it's minty. So kind of save that one for your last or rinse it a couple times to get that mint smell and mint flavor out of the machine. Just you can use plain tap water. If you go to take the door off or open the door, you're going to have to sanitize the machine again before you run it. Uh, are you going to show us how to rinse in between one of the flavors? You'll see us in between. So like when Jeff is going to do his, you'll see me rinse in and whenever, vice versa. And so we talked, uh, did you talk about the cutoff check? Mm -hmm. Cutoff, where you open and close it? No. So obviously we're only five minutes in, but if I go to open and close this, it's still pretty soupy. So we're gonna need quite a bit longer on that. So that's what we call a cutoff check. And the longer this goes, you're gonna open and then close the gate. And then if it pours out, obviously that's not done. If you close it and it cuts off and it just kind of plops down, you know, some people like to pull it thicker, some like to pull it on the thinner side. Um, I pull mine it kind of in the middle. Jeff pulls his on the thinner. And then my uh, colleague, Mike, he likes to pull his pretty thick. Uh, so here's what I have learned. Jeff is probably more pro at this. But when you pull it on the thinner side, it's going to fill your container up more evenly. If you, fill it on, if you pull it pretty thick, it's going to start making like air pockets. And you're going to have to bang it down and, and get it nice and level. Yes? Agree with that? Sure. <laughs> Yes, I think so. You know, I think a little bit of it is a preference. Um, you know, if you're putting in a whole bladder, that's 10 quarts, that's five gallons, that's, that's two of these. So if you pull it a little bit thinner, you're going to fill these up nice, nice and pretty even. If you pull it really, really, really thick, then you're going to have to sit there and smack it, spread it, push it down a little bit to fill these up. I think it's a little bit on the science side. To me, it's not. If you ask, you know, some other certain people, they'll probably tell you yes. But to me, there's not. I don't. I don't see any difference whatsoever. I don't. And, and never have. Uh, so it's really is a personal preference. Uh, the advantage to what Jeff does, uh, as Christy said, of 
uh, pulling it a little sooner is you're going to get a more even fill. Uh, even to the point where when we're filling pints, we turn them upside down in the freezer. So if there's any gaps, when you open the package, it's always going to be full. Mm. But no, there's no texture difference. The freezing has already been done at that point. Go ahead. That's all. Any other questions? Curiosity? Where you get flavors? Does anybody uh, currently have a store? No? Oh, go ahead. Um, Jeff turns the compression off. What's the question? So he asked. So he said. He said Jeff, when he turns on the compressor, he turns or the refrigeration. He walks off. Is the machine going to stop it or keep running until it breaks? You're not going to break the machine. It's got an internal alarm. So once it gets too thick, it's going to shut itself off. So it that doesn't happen don't use that we ask you not to use that as your timer you know some people do but let's not let's not do that um and like i said you know everybody knows and and gets in sync with their machine and like i can hear it now i've been doing it so long i can hear it's getting thicker um instead of hearing it sloshing uh so you could pull it at your own time frame so it's like an internal body clock you know when you're cooking at home and on the stove you know if you go fold a load of laundry real quick oh you know it's something in your brain so you'll you'll know after you get the hang of it but you won't break the machine, it'll, it'll shut itself down. Yes? So her question was, is how long do you run the refrigeration? It depends on what product you're making. So an example, this one, I know it's going to take a long time. It's the first batch, plus it's got a lot of sugar content. So you're probably looking around, like I said, 13, 15 minutes. Um, if I was running vanilla, I'm looking at eight to nine minutes. If you're running... Um, you know, like the banana split, it's probably going to take about 12, 13 minutes. So it really just depends on your sugar content. Italian ice, uh, I make a really good orange Italian ice. It's just orange juice and sugar. The Simply brand orange juice, that's it. There's no water, there's no nothing, but it's sugar and sugar. And that can take about 15, 17 minutes. So it, it really just depends on your sugar content. Yes, ma'am. We're going to give it a, a check and let's see what it looks like. See how it got a little bit thicker? So right now we're at 10 minutes and I said about 13, 15. So we're, we're probably right around on that target. Yes, ma'am. Um, are all the flowers the same? And what's the material? So the bladders, they all come in 10 quart bladders. Um, and they're, they're all the same, but they're not. So it's all gonna contain, contain the same type of ingredients. Um, but they can come anywhere from 10% butter fat all the way to 19% butter fat. Here in the South, we kind of like to stick with the 10% because it's hot, it's icky, and you know, to be honest, our stomachs probably really can't handle that super heavy butter fat. Um, unless you all know Twisty Treat, well, that's the best, best ice cream, uh, soft serve, but shh, don't tell Steve that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you go more up north and you're going to have more of a higher butter fat. Uh, there's also different companies like Meadowvale. They make a clean label dairy mix. Uh, that's in your packet, I believe, as well. So that's all natural ingredients and everything that you can pronounce. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with good old-fashioned you know, dairy mix that you're going to get from a dairy farmer. Now, a lot of people call and ask, can I make my own mix? Yes, you can, but you're going to get involved with the FDA. That's a whole other rules, laws, regulations, permits, and it's not worth it. Um, you know, and a lot of people go, well, I'm not making my own ice cream if I don't make my mix. And I go, well, if you bake a cake, do you go out and mill your own flour or do you go buy your flour? Same thing. You're buying your mix, but you're still making your ice cream. We use, um, dairy, we use Dairy Mix, that's actually the name of the company, and it's here local to us. So every state ha and county, you'll, every state, I wouldn't say county, but every state has a dairy close to you, and there's a dairy supplier list in your packet as well. And of course, you can always give us a call and we could try to help you and, and get you in contact with some people to, to get this locally. 
So we're at 12 and a half. Let's give it a little check. Still a little. I think it could use a couple more minutes. Is there a timer? Yes, there is. There is a timer. So as soon as you, so even though you turn on your dasher, your timer's not going to start. It's only when you turn on your refrigeration. So as soon as you turn on your refrigeration, your timer's gonna start. And then next to your recipe, when, you're, when your batch is done, write down how many minutes it took. So that way you can buy a, where's, oh, Steve has a, oh, here. <laughs> Steve has a little timers like this. So next to your recipe, you'll know this one takes 15 minutes, an example. And you'll set your little timer for 15, stick it up here, and it'll go off, and then you know to come back, or you can set it at 12 to come back and check it. I thought you had another question. So you, you turn on the dash, which is your mixer, there's no time. No, it's not, no, it's not going to turn on the timer until you hit the refrigeration. Any questions? Did everybody adjust their formula to the on your paper? Mm -hmm. So I'll have to make that. Yep, so just two of these. I think it tastes it tastes spot on. I don't want to overpower it. And you could always add more. You can never take away. Um, and even if you do add too much, it's very easy to figure out because you know, whoa, you know, that was a little much. Um, you'll figure out in your first one or two batches, so you don't have to go. A lot of people think that they need to buy a machine two months in advance, three months, six months, two years in advance to learn to do all of it. It's, it's such an easy process. Um, that was my first time doing it. I knew a, a rule of thumb for my chocolate powder. I put in the two jars, tasted it, good to go. It's, it's really that easy. Yes? Do you know the difference? You said Meadowvale um, doesn't have, is all natural. What would be not natural in like what you use here versus? <laughs> like a preservative, which is normal. That's in just about every single thing that you eat and that's completely okay it's fine you know there are some specialty shops that cater for vegan only uh, dairy free only uh, diet friendly specialty um, you know shops like that that like to produce or or you know make product that says I'm all natural so that's when they come in handy and I've ran it before and it is a very 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 good product but Meadowvale also has custard they have regular dairy mix and then they also have that clean label polysorbate 80. There is no reason in today's world of all natural to have polysorbate 80 in your ice cream mix. Molted dextrin. Molted dextrin will give you diarrhea. <laughs> Very simple. In fact, if you buy sugar-free candies, if you buy Stouffer's sugar-free candies, uh, I, I do everything to excess. So you open up the package and you eat, it's a little package like that and it's sugar-free. I'm a diabetic. This is great. I eat the whole package hour later I've got diarrhea. It says on the package, eating, consuming more than two of these candies in one sitting will give you diarrhea. Because that's what multidextrin does. You don't need these things. Um, Leopold's ice cream uh, up in Savannah, Georgia. She once told me her ice cream consists of milk, cream, sugar, skim milk. That's it. What? Yeah, it matters by butter fat content, but sorry, Chrissy's about to pull this. Okay, so it was at 15 and 20 seconds. And this is going to be a very thick and a very heavy ice cream because we ran it on gelato setting. So what if you speed it up? I don't want to speed it up. Okay. <laughs> but I can. on that poly sorbet 80 that's not in like dairy mix brand right it's not in the one christie's talking about it's in a lot of dairy mixes and that's going to cause you a problem now we're going to turn it up mm -hmm. that also comes in handy if you want to fill pints which you can do from this machine and this machine but and that machine you can't really fill pints from. Put this back under there. Let's try raspberry gelato. You guys can take over now. I'm going to serve. <laughs> so there's still some dripping out of 
there. You're just gonna, uh, what, you know, how do you get, what do you do? You, you don't have to worry about that. You'll get that stuff in your what I do is there's only uh, going to be uh, a few ounces left in the machine because it's so efficient. Uh, but when I plan my ice cream, I'm not, at this class, we're doing one-offs. We're doing this one, and we're doing that one, and we're doing that one. The proper way to make ice cream is start with your vanilla products. So you make vanilla ice cream. Uh, you're running an ice cream parlor. You probably need 10 tubs of vanilla. It's the number one selling flavor. So you make 10 tubs of vanilla. Then you go to a vanilla-like product. Well, what's a vanilla-like product? Butterscotch swirl. We're making vanilla ice cream in the machine so we haven't contaminated it, and now we're adding butterscotch as it's coming out. We're swirling it in. Then we're doing raspberry, and we're doing chocolate, and we're doing uh, Nutella. We can do all these different swirls because it's still just vanilla. So now for the first six hours, We've only made vanilla ice cream. We don't need to worry about anything. If I was to make a mistake and go from chocolate to vanilla, now I've got to rinse out the machine. And so I'm going to uh, put in some water, let it slosh around for 30 seconds, and drain it out, and I'm ready to go. Uh, the exception to everything is peanut, uh, peanut butter. Everybody is very conscious of peanuts and peanut allergies. So uh, what's important to do is make that the last flavor of the day because after peanuts, you need to tear the machine down completely, re-sanitize everything, let it air dry out on a table, and come back to it the next day. So it's just a matter of simplicity. It's, it takes you maybe five minutes to set up the machine in the morning. Uh, so it isn't going to make you, even in five minutes, it's not going to make sense for you to make one batch of vanilla today and then walk away and make another batch tomorrow. Try to build an inventory. The Italians make everything in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, they make all their six or eight flavors, and that's it for the day. They don't make any more ice cream. They don't have any inventory of ice cream. So at 10.30, you walk in and you want tiramisu gelato. Oh, I'm sorry, we ran out at 9.30. But don't worry, there's another uh, gelateria uh, in Florence a half a block away. Our ice cream parlors are 20, 30 miles away. Theirs is a half a block away. So they have no brand loyalty. They just say, ah, okay, I'll go to the other guy. We need every flavor that we make needs to be in inventory at all time. You ready to go, Christy? Yep. All right. It's very good, I think. I'm going to try this one, too. Jeff, you want a spoon? Absolutely. You're welcome. There you go. And what is this? This is uh, chocolate raspberry gelato. Oh, well, that's good. That's very good. Mm. Excellent. You know, that's what I was going for, like the Ghirardelli, Ghirardelli yeah. I don't think it needs any more raspberry. So it's good to have it on hand, so that way you can taste it. If it needs more, you can put more into it. Um, and the best part, you went to the grocery store to get it. I mean, the Forbes chocolate, you know, you got to order that. But everything else, you can go to Publix, Walmart, Costco. It doesn't matter wherever you want to go. I'm going to go pack this. Um, once in a while we get a question from people just starting up and they say, well, why don't I just go buy my ice cream? It's so much easier. I don't need this equipment. I don't have to do it. You go buy it because Breyers, Blue Bell, Hershey, uh, even Haagen-Dazs, Ben & Jerry, all companies that Emory Thompson put into business and, uh, and now are using our machines, the CB350, to run test batches while they run a thousand gallon an hour machine. That's what they offer and you have to sell what they offer. So you can get Hershey's Vanilla wait, 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 wait. or uh, uh, ch uh, Cherry Swirl at any place that says Hershey's Ice Cream. But you can only get your ice cream at you your ice opener. cream parlor. Uh, I've, had, I've had people say, you know what, you can go anywhere in the United States. You can go to Chicago, Philadelphia, San Diego and get Haagen-Dazs ice cream. But, you know what, when you're in Chicago, make sure you try this homemade place and, and make sure in San Diego you go to this place. It's the homemade businesses that are what are going to attract the attention because you can do flavors like this. Christie's got a CB200 at home 
and she invents these flavors just out of thin air, and they're great. Yes, you're still going to have vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry, uh, but you can have these other flavors. Uh, I've also reduced down the number of uh, flavors that we have in a store, uh, just because rent has gotten so high that you can't afford a $3,000 a month store. You need a 900 square foot store to start up with. Uh, that's exactly the way Jeff started and then grew from there. But you might only have uh, 12 flavors. Out of those 12 flavors, there are 10 of them are going to be, or eight of them are going to be the old standards. Uh, two are going to be flavors of the week that you're going to advertise on social media. And the other two are going to be dairy free. So you're going to have quite a variety. Anything I can help you with on that? You're going to have quite a variety of uh, products in your store without running 35, 40 flavors. There's no reason for it. You don't need five deaths by chocolate. Uh, you don't need more than one coffee. I, I make a, a fantastic coffee chocolate chip. So uh, making your own ice cream, and you'll never have competition. If you're a homemade ice cream parlor in Savannah, Georgia, uh, if, if, if you're uh, Leopold's ice cream, nobody else is coming into town. No one's ever going to open up against you. Another store did try uh, a chain, and you know, Leopold's, uh, Stratton Leopold, the owner, he's got lines out the door, and the other guy's kind of standing there, gee, I wonder if anyone's going to come in my store. So if you're in a smaller town and you're already there as the only ice cream parlor, no franchise in the world is going to come into the town because they know what I know. At the very best, since you're already there, the only thing they can hope for is to maybe get 50% of your business. Well, you go to another town and you can get 100% of the business. So that's why you're here and that's why you want to do your own ice cream because of the variety you can do. And Jeff is teed up to make what next? What are you making next? Um, very berry. All right. Very berry. And what's in Berry Berry? Well, hang on now. It's the anticipation. <laughs> All right, Berry Berry, the recipe for Berry Berry is in a 12-quart machine or half of a 24-quart machine, 33 ounces of guava. guava and blueberries blueberries so you're going to use the frozen ones what you're going to use the frozen ones well they're not frozen anymore okay they were frozen when they came out of the freezer 33 ounces of the fruit combined what's that the fruit, fruit you said 33 ounces is that the fruit combined or is it different no 33 ounces of guava and half a pound of blueberries. But, you know, that's all subjective, right? Mm -hmm. you, you want more blueberries? You just add more blueberries. What we really hope to show you today is the simplicity of this and the adaptability. If, if Christy likes her product a little less sweet than mine, that's how she'll make it. I like my stuff to be sweeter, that's how I make it. Of course, the customer is the most important thing, but uh, if you come to my ice cream store, uh, we offer, say, 30 flavors at any given time, and they're sweet, because I like sweet and I like a lot of flavor. Okay? Okay. Now, I'm, I'm a little perplexed. I think what we're going to do is make a slurry out of the guava and the blueberries in the Ninja. Okay? And to do that, we'll, of course, add a little cream to make everything happen. Okay? So we're going to add, how many quarts of this do we need? About five. Okay. So we'll start with our five quarts. And then from that, we'll take 
a little bit and put it in the ninja. Uh, I guess just a little will do it. And then we'll add the guava. <laughs> guava. Anybody know what guava is? We found out this morning that guava is a berry. A big berry. And then we'll throw the blueberries in too. You notice they leave when I'm up doing this, right? <laughs> Just jump ship. All right, let's grind this up and see what happens. And we'll add the, uh, the mix. You asked about rinsing the machine, and I did that. Okay. You just put water in there and just turn it on, or? You got it. Okay. Uh, and now we'll, uh, we'll add the cream to the machine. That's why the apron is on, so I can make a mess. Uh, now we're going to add the, uh, the stuff. to add brown sugar. Don't let me forget the brown sugar. Correct. No refrigeration. I usually don't put the refrigeration on until I know exactly what I got. We're also going to add about five ounces of vanilla and not the top of it. Brown sugar. Who said that? Right. Refrigeration. You say that you here. Oh. Um, you say that you wanted to see what you had first. Are you saying? Hang on, I can't hear you with the okay. machine running. Hold on. Okay, what's your question? So you stated that you wanted to wait until you see what you had until you added the refrigeration. Are you discussing the taste in it? You want to see how sweet or whatever have you. Right. Once you're happy with that, then that's when you want to move forward. Right. right? Okay, just wanted to make sure I understood. Uh, dark brown sugar. What? Who said that? I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay, so we're just guessing. <laughs> we're trying to figure out. Uh, we'll have to do this by taste. I th that we're going to probably use around four ounces. And my knife is gone. Can we get your knife? No, we should have a knife somewhere. Oh, I got it. I got it. We're from the Bronx. We've got lots of knives. Uh, 
All right, four ounces. We'll start with four ounces. So what we want to do is put this on the scale and then tear it, which means, uh, why isn't that zeroing it? Okay. Four ounces of uh, brown sugar. And obviously that's weight, four ounces. This isn't working very well. I'm gonna get you up. No, we're okay. No, I just had to open it more. Okay. <clears throat> what? Nothing. I love brown sugar and ice cream. I've worked with it quite a bit. Um, so you'll be surprised on how well brown sugar works in ice cream. The taste makes it different or it's better than just like granulated sugar. Well, oh, don't forget it has molasses in it, so it'll it'll taste that mapley molassy flavor also. And it depends on the flavor you're making too. I wouldn't just dump <laughs> I wouldn't dump it in everything. <laughs> I've never made an Italian ice with brown sugar. I've done honey, but uh, the taste is so distinct that usually you're at, using it as an add-on. You know, we're, we're making this and we're adding in a little brown sugar. Okay, we'll fire it up. And hang on. Careful with this. Okay, so that's uh, very berry. What else could you add to this? Strawberries. Strawberries. What else? Blackberries. Blackberries, raspberries, anything. The name of the ice cream is Very Berry. However, if you have a store and you're making this the third time, don't suddenly throw strawberries in when you haven't done that before because the first customer who says, wait, this isn't what it was. This doesn't taste like it used to. So consistency, very important in a store when you're selling to regular customers, as opposed to irregular customers. When you're uh, selling to people who come in all the time, Steve says that he goes to where in New England? Uh, oh, Cape Cod. Cape Cod, and he loves the mint chocolate chip in this one place, and he goes there every year on vacation. And if one year, they decided to, even something subtle, you know, mint chocolate chip, you've seen it green, you've seen it white. Well, it's white there. If suddenly it were green, his perception would be they changed it, it's not the same. So be aware, that doesn't mean you can't improve on things. We've done that, but then that becomes the new norm. And change is seen as cheapening. Uh, if you detect a change in an ice cream, you think, oh, they cheapened it up, they put something else in. Uh, the the Briar's coffee, if it tastes different next year, they did cheapen it. <laughs> it couldn't get any worse. Uh, but that's, that's usually uh, what people think, so you don't want to do that. Um, when Christy was talking about uh, using uh, two jars versus three of the uh, Smuckers, um, when you're making a formula, write it down. Uh, Christy alluded to this. She said, you don't need uh, to make, spend six months coming up with a flavor. We get a lot of people say, I'm gonna buy the machine a year in advance and experiment. And I'm thinking, and I say, why, why are you bothering? Concentrate on the store. Try, concentrate on getting the lease. Concentrate on designing the store. Because the ice cream's the easiest part. You can take any of our formulas or Jeff's formulas in his book or Christie's formula in her book and follow it and it's gonna be a great ice cream. But then the chef in you kicks in. Uh, you're gonna add maybe a few more raspberries than Christie does or a little less chocolate than uh, Jeff does or uh, as much vanilla as I do. No, that's for You'll the next. tweak it. 
So a couple of things. When you're tweaking the formula, if you're playing with, with oh, it. I think it needs more vanilla, write down your formula. This is real important. Don't do what I do. Write down your formula, label it, okay, experiment number two, vanilla, and then put on the container, experiment number two, vanilla. Because you're going to make five or six vanillas today trying to come up with just what you like. Oh my gosh, this is fantastic. What was it? You know, and you don't know what was in it. So you want to write that down. But just like in baking, I mean, if I open up Steve Thompson's House of Cakes, uh, <laughs> you like that? It used to be Steve Thompson's House of Toast where you could have the toast buttered on the near side or the far side. Oh. So Steve Thompson's, oh. Oh. <laughs> Steve Thompson's House of Cakes. I mean, how much can I change a, a, a lemon cake? It's going to have, if, if I add more water, it'll be soupy. If I add more flour, it'll be dry. If I add more lemon, there's a change, okay. So uh, two of the ingredients you can't, really can't play with that much. Same thing when we talk about Italian ices. You can add more sugar to make it a Philadelphia water ice or the normal proper amount of sugar to make it a New York style Italian ice, A. Um, so there isn't that much you can change. Start with our formulas, they're free. And, and their books are not, but they're excellent. And that's where you can concentrate, and then you'll tweak it a little bit to yourself. It becomes your, you know, I've got 38, over 38,000 customers in 171 countries. I guarantee you all 38,000 have different vanilla ice cream. And so you just tweak it a little bit. You don't need to spend months and years. You do need to concentrate on getting the location that you're happy with. That's what really matters. This will take care of itself. You're seeing today how simple and easy it is. And then along the same line, as long as I've got the pulpit, um, you're going to call up in a couple of years and you're going to say, I bought a CB350, I need a 44-quart batch freezer. You know, the big guy, four, four tubs, the haagen stuff. And I say, no, you don't. Uh, how many hours a day are you running that? Oh, I'm, I'm running it, uh, you know, 12 hours a day. And, uh, and I say, why do you stop at 12? Are you tired? No, I don't have any more freezer space. Okay. So what's your problem? Is it that the batch freezer is not big enough or you need more freezer space? So I just lost myself a sale for this year you, because I pointed out you need more freezer space. Okay, you continue to grow. You've got more freezer space. You're working at uh, 16 hours a day. You're exhausted. I need time off. Okay, I, I need a bigger machine so I can do it smaller. Granted, good idea. You want to buy a smaller, a bigger machine? We'll sell you the 24. Or because I don't want to spend your money. I can wait. Uh, or you can uh, hire more labor. I can't find labor. And besides, who can I trust to make my formulas? I mean, this, I, I have studied for years doing this. I said, no, you haven't. You took my class two years ago, and you're using Christy and Mike and, and uh, the uh, tie dye Jeff's formulas out of their books. What are you telling me you studied this for years? And you called me up and said, what if I had an ounce more vanilla? And I said, go for it. So the problem I will have with you is only I can make my ice cream. Nobody else in the world can make my ice cream. If you're hiring a 17-year-old, you're probably correct. But if you go out and you go to the local police station and talk to the, um, the desk sergeant, or you go to the firehouse and talk to the captain and say, hey, I need to hire someone who can come in on the graveyard shift, 11 till 6 and make 70 gallons of ice cream for me while I go home and go to sleep. Wow, what a great idea. They're not doing anything. They've got the time off, and we underpay our police, fire, and I also include recently retired military. Uh, I don't include old geezers like myself, uh, you know, who would be retired from military. I'm talking about younger people who need the job. We don't pay the cops and firemen enough. They all have second jobs. My wife, Paula, who you may have met coming in, our office manager, her father was NYPD. He was on Long Island when he wasn't in New York City in the police department. He worked as a landscaper. Down here in central Florida, we have this great propensity to fence everything in and turn it into gated communities. The firemen and the policemen all work putting up fencing. And you go and you hire one fireman and you actually get three because they don't always have the midnight shift off and they only have it once a month. What exactly are you talking about? How to expand the business. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. To be continued.
What? How many minutes? Eight. Don't write it down. Oh. It doesn't matter. Okay. And it won't be eight in, in a half an hour. Okay. Ready, kid? put it into the deep freezer and you keep it for a while, do you notice that it keeps the same consistency or does it turn into almost like the um, hard scoop at some of the other places? Does that make sense? The consistency won't change. It'll just get colder. Okay. If, if you put soup into the refrigerator, hot soup into the refrigerator, it'll get colder. If you put hot soup into the freezer, it'll freeze into a rock. So you're not changing the soup, you're only changing the temperature of it. Not the right. consistency. So, so if you wanted a harder texture, then you would need to modify your recipe? No, the best way to get a harder texture is to turn down the speed with my so infinite speed. overrun control that nobody else has. Got it, speed. Change. Yeah, Got speed it. is, you know, think of it this way. Am I interrupting you, Jack? No. I don't want to do that. No, you're fine. Okay, speed here we go. Uh, I pour some heavy cream in here, and I stir it with a whisk. It remains heavy cream. But if I put heavy cream in here and I take an electric mixer, Jeff uses an electric drill with a paint bit on the end of it. It's great. Put that in there. Boom. I've got whipped cream. It's all about the speed. And we're the only people that can do that. So by lowering the speed, we're lowering the weight of the product. We're making it heavier. You put a gallon in, you only get a gallon and a quarter back. We're doing homemade ice cream. We put one gallon in, we get two gallons back. Because I know that when my employees go to scoop it, they're attacking the tub and they're compressing the ice cream. And so you think it's maximum over and no, it's not. It's, it's uh, three quarters by the time the customer gets it. Saucer. I know these are just hard That's a dirty word. We don't say that around here. Okay. <laughs> Chris, do you want to take that? Uh, I don't know the inner workings of a soft serve machine, but it's not ice cream. So by law, the FDA requires at least 10% butter fat to be called ice cream. That's why McDonald's, Dairy Queen, all those places are called soft serve because their butter fat's 6%. So legally, it's not even ice cream. And it's like, a, I, I don't really know the inner workings of it, but it just stays in like, that much butter fat for they, no, it's air. That's why it has no texture. There's no flavor. You can't do anything with it. You just have vanilla, chocolate, or swirl. They use less Boring. flavor, and it's one at a time. The machine is sitting there 12 hours a day, turning itself on, turning itself off beating the dairy product to mm -hmm. death, and there's nobody in the store, you walk in, I want a soft serve. You pull down the handle and you take one. It, this is a batch freezer. Uh, I wrote an article called uh, the tater tot theorem. I'm baking tater tots, and when they're ready, I take the whole pan out at once. That's a batch of tater tots. Uh, this is a batch of ice cream or tater tots. We're taking all the tater tots out at once. That's a batch. If I leave that, batch in the machine, those tater tots are continuing to cook in the batch oven. And so they started off just right, then they're a little more crispy, then they're brown, and then your house is on fire because you left it in the oven. When you bake, when you do a steak, you go according to time and you take the entire batch of steak out of the oven. A soft serve is you're just standing here pulling one crummy product out of it at a time. And it's either vanilla or chocolate because you can't put nuts, cookies, candies, or anything else into a soft ice cream machine. They're horribly expensive. They start at about $35,000, and they break four times a year at least. So, and they take an hour to clean. So you thought you closed at 10 o'clock tonight? No, you're there till 11 cleaning the soft serve machine. And that's why it's always McBroke. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> real quick. <laughs> Took it, say, uh -huh. Don't even bother with it. <laughs> uh, so these orange spoons that you are using, this is from Frozen Dessert Supplies. Their information is also in your packet. They have just about everything you can think of. They have cups. They can do custom cups. They can do labels to put on your cups so you're not spending the money for a custom cup. 
They have spoons that every style, shape, color, doesn't matter, spoon, anything that you need to get into the business, they have it, frozen dessert supplies. Sam Whitlock, he's a super great guy, um, and um, these are compliments of him, and I like how they, I know it sounds kind of corny, but <laughs> I like how they go on your tongue when you, when you go to eat it, and it's got a nice, yeah, it's got a nice fat little handle here, so anybody can grab it, you know, especially little toddlers and kids, or they're just... User friendly. Frozen dessert supplies. Thanks. At our website, emerythompson.com, mm -hmm. under key suppliers. And I just want to point out here uh, we don't get a dime from anybody no. for recommending these companies. We okay, at Christmas time, the chocolate company sent me some Hershey bars. I'm uh, sorry, Forbes chocolate bars, not Hershey. <laughs> uh, oh, big mistake. <laughs> but we don't get a dime. The only reason we recommend anything is because we have proven it to be the very best there is. And uh, we, Christy and I, want to be, and, and Jeff, we want to be a, a source of knowledge for you so that you're not hunting around and buying a lot of bad stuff from China uh, and then finding out that it's garbage and throwing it all out. We'll save you that. We have worked with these people for years and years. And usually, we'll have a name for you, uh, like Cherish Matthews uh, at uh, Forbes Chocolate. You call up Cherish and say, Christy sent me, and she'll go, oh, thank God, at least it wasn't that Steve Thompson. <laughs> uh, but uh, they will take good care of you, yes. So when you add chocolate, like a lot of times when I buy an ice cream with chocolate in it, I hate the chocolate. So how do you find really good chocolate? Forbes. Forbes chocolate. Forbes. Just stick with Forbes. They and have different, sorry. Go oh, ahead. I was going to say they have like 287, 289. They have a bunch of different numbers. We like to use 287 and 289. 287, I believe, is the one that's just double dark chocolate. And then 289, it's just a little bit more of a darker pigment to give it a super dark chocolatey color. It's like anything. You, you get what you pay for. Uh, if you can buy a batch freezer for, uh, from us for about $14,000 uh, or higher, <laughs> Uh, or you can get one from China for $1,999. Which one do you think will be working next week? Obviously not the $1,999. If you want cheap chocolate, you go to a cheap chocolate. Sounds like Lucy, cheap chop chocolate. Yeah, cheap chocolate. vitamin and vegemin. <laughs> um, you're going to get what you pay for. If you want Hershey, fine. The world loves Hershey's. It's a low-grade chocolate compared to Forbes or Jeff mm -hmm. uses uh, Giadelli. Um, they're, yeah. both, they're both good. We have our preference. Jeff has his. We both make great chocolate ice creams. Hershey syrup is great for an additive as far as you want to give it a little, you know, boost of a chocolate <coughs> flavor or a background of it. Um, I have tried making chocolate ice cream with just straight Hershey's syrup. You would think, you know, making the old school chocolate milk, you know, you get your cup of milk and put your Hershey syrup in there. Oh, so good. Yeah, no, that was the grossest thing I think I ever had in my life. <laughs> um, so don't do that. <laughs> Stick with, you know, like Ghirardelli or Forbes chocolate. No we missed a break. Question about the berries. Um, you used seedless raspberry jam. Uh, oh, yes, ma'am. So if you want to use fresh raspberries or homemade raspberry jam, do you take the seeds out? I don't. I have bought just plain frozen raspberries, um, well, mixed berries, and that has the seeds in it, and I have made it. I have made, um, which is also in this recipe book, um, a very, very wine sorbet, and it's equal amounts of red sweet wine to equal amounts of water, two pounds of sugar, and then two bags or two pounds of frozen strawberries and blueberries and raspberries thawed. Um, and I like the seeds in there. It gives a little texture. It doesn't um, you know, hurt my teeth when I bite into them. It doesn't bother me. Um, I think maybe an older community might with you know, other the teeth issues. Softens the texture. What is wine? It's alcohol. It's alcohol. It tastes good. <laughs> so it's going to melt super fast. So. When you go to scoop it, be sure, you know, they eat it right away, but it definitely freezes perfectly just like this would, anything else would. Now, the lower the proof, um, the more alcohol you can add, the higher the proof you can't. An example, you know, Jim Beam, Jack, that's a very high proof. We don't want to dump a whole bottle in there because it'll just never freeze. It'll be soup. You'll have gym soup. Um, you know, if you want to use Malibu rum or a cordial, that's a very low proof, or a wine, you can do that because these are, what, 12%? Yeah, 12.5%. How much did you add the wine? 
So you do two quarts of wine to two quarts of water, and then two pounds of sugar, two, two, two. And that's in the CB350. And the CB350. The millennials came up with the term alcohol-infused. How boring can you get for a term? The next group down for them, what is it, Gen X, Gen Z? I always get you, mixed up. you said millennials? What comes after mm -hmm. below millennial? Gen Z. All right, the Gen Z's called it boozy ice cream. What a great term. It just sounds fun to say it. So we're putting alcohol into ice cream. We're putting alcohol into Italian ice or fresh fruit sorbet. We are the only machine that you can pour the alcohol, uh, Jim Bean, uh, uh, cruise and rum right into the machine. It will never freeze. The freezing point is around 237 below zero. It will blend in. Begin. We have so much refrigeration power that it will stay in suspension in the ice cream. So we're making uh, bourbon vanilla ice cream. Uh, we're making uh, uh, Christy makes a margarita uh, Italian ice. Uh, there's a lot of this uh, going on now, and it's great fun, and it's been widely accepted. I always had a problem with it that uh, ice cream parlors were for children. They direct you where you're going to drive the car to go get ice cream, and we don't want them coming in wanting alcohol. But that was solved. You know, you put up another sign, alcohol costs more. You put up another sign that says, you must be 21 years of age or older, and we proof. And uh, that, that's always a lot of fun. You get someone my age and say, let's see your ID. You know, we laugh about it. But now you can add an extra dollar, dollar fifty, two dollars onto your scoop of product because it's got alcohol in it. Didn't cost you that much, but since it is uh, boozy ice cream, we can get a higher price. And we can turn anything into a boozy ice cream. There are health department uh, state regulations on how much alcohol you can use. But I'll tell you a quick story. I won't tell you where I, which, where I heard it. But um, if you want to figure out how much alcohol you can put in, you call up the state. Don't give me your name. Just say, I'm going to make alcohol uh, ice cream. Uh, how much alcohol can, can I put in? And New York State, I'm making up numbers. New York State might say, you can put in 0.7% uh, uh, ounces of alcohol per volume or per, what is, I don't remember what the term is. But uh, they have a set amount. I don't care what the set amount is. If it's 0.7 and someone from the state comes in and says, how much are you putting in here? I'm putting in 0.6. Okay, you're below the limit. And they walk away. Uh, if, if you, uh, really, I'm sorry, I'm a New Yorker. Better to beg for forgiveness and ask for permission. Uh, because if you He's tell them, me that. If, you, if you tell them we are using this, 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 oh, well, then we're going to have to take a sample and analyze it. Oh. What, you're going to take it back to the store, uh, to your uh, car, and you're going to eat it yourself? Um, so you just find out what that requirement is, and that's a little less than that is what you put in. And the boozy ice cream has just taken off tremendously. It's great to sell individual pints at Christmas time. Uh, with uh, I, I call the recipe that uh, Christy rattled off Bordeaux wine sorbet, and it sounds great. Uh, well, we missed break um, somehow, but before we go do a quick little break, there is the Emory Thompson recipe book. There is 111 recipes in here. If you would like to see what's in it, just kind of finger through it. Go see Kendall. Uh, just ask for Kendall in the front office with the ladies up there, and then you can kind of finger through it if it's something that you'd like to purchase. It's, it's a really great book, and every single formula is broken down for whatever size machine you buy, from the little guy all the way up to the big guy. There are stories in there that yep. uh, were handed down through our family. Uh, I won't tell you one now, but one that was verified on uh, the History Channel was that Emery Thompson was single-handedly responsible for saving uh, dozens of lives during World War II of Navy airmen uh, who would fall off the side of the ship and the destroyers would go to save them. And in the book you'll find out what Emory Thompson had to do with that and why uh, they were able to save airmen. And uh, there's all sorts of fun stories like that. There's in it. short stories, vintage ads of the history of Emory Thompson through 119 years of, you know, in the making, um, you know, fat content, scooping, con uh, scooping temperatures, all kinds of helpful information. So just go see Kendall and you can kind of finger through it. No taking photos, though. Yeah. I'm third generation and we are the oldest company in the ice cream business uh, manufacturing machinery. And don't worry. Uh, the machines last 40 years, and Generation 4 and Generation 5 are coming along nicely. So we're going to take a break. You're free to roam the building. You can use the bathrooms here. If uh, the bathrooms get crowded up, there's another one in my office. We can show you where that is. We'll meet back in about 10 minutes and uh, continue. <laughs> so
see we were wrong even about that. Sure. Everybody back it's, yet? It's empty. Oh. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yep. That's it. No, nothing special. Stick it on the shelf. Okay. <laughs> How the hell did he do that? Yeah. How did he do that? I did it. How did you do that? I don't know. I'm, well, I'm psychic. How did you? I, it can't work. It just, it did. Okay. I want Steve's. Hmm. It's called like Steve's. on the Edge. <laughs> Mango Italian ice. Yeah, I'm excited. Back. Looks like it. Um, from uh, so the previous uh, section, I forgot to mention Jeff has ice cream boot camp. Uh, this is a two day hands on course up in. South Daytona Beach. Uh, what could be better than to come to a course in Daytona Beach? I mean, it's, I mean the vacation's already there, and you can write it off to your business. You know, they'll, they'll never know, and I won't tell the IRS unless you buy somebody else's machine. Um, so it's going to go through. Uh, you can read this later. It's going to go through uh, store layout, uh, creating recipes, profits, taxes, insurance, permits, legal, all the things that we don't do. And uh, it's a fantastic course. He's had uh, just hundreds and hundreds of graduates over the years. And uh, it's two days before our course. So we actually have another course coming up this February. You can sign up for this one uh, of Jeff's. And let me give you the email address. And you have to listen carefully because you're going to call me when it's on there. through. It's on there. It's on here. But your brain is going to spell hippie, <laughs> H-I-P-P-Y. But those of us who lived through the 60s don't remember the 60s, mainly because of what we did in the 60s. Never met a uh, beverage or, dr or powder that we didn't love. Um, so it's xhippie, x-h-i-p-p-e-e, -E at, and the last person standing at aol.com. <laughs> I know, don't laugh at them. x-h-i-p-p-e-e -E at aol.com. So when you call me up and it doesn't go through and Jeff doesn't answer you, I'm going to tell you that you spelled it wrong and it's like putting the blades in backwards in my machine. I've been making ice cream for 200 years. I can never make such a rookie mistake. Okay, humor me. So we'll put that up where it can be seen later. And we're going to make mango Italian ice. I got a lot to say about Italian ice. This is the greatest way in the world to make money. It is sugar, water, and flavor. Your, your main ingredient is tap water. It doesn't get any tap cheaper than tap water. They, they, they bill you on tap water for your home by thousands of gallons. You know, cream is like $9 for a little half pint. Thousands of gallons of water for your Italian ice. Sugar, you buy it at the supermarket. Jeff has convinced me that it's got to say pure cane sugar, which narrows it down to Domino. But there is a big difference. Uh, cane sugar is from stalks of sugar cane, whereas the other stuff is from beets and uh, does not have the same freezing properties, doesn't have the same taste. Flavor, everything's about flavor. There's so many ways to do flavor. If you want to sell it at uh, Yankee Stadium and you want it just cold on a hot day, you just want something cold and cheap, you use an uh, inexpensive or cheap extract. So it, it might be cherry extract, um, and it's, it's going to be uh, just pennies to use an extract. It will make you a cherry-flavored Italian ice. If you want to make uh, an excellent uh, ice, which is what we're going to do today, uh, I use iRice Company. It's the letter I is in iPhone, and then rice, R-I-C-E, like the food. iRice Company. And they have been making Italian ice flavors and now ice cream flavors uh, for decades and decades. They're out of Philadelphia. Philadelphia thinks it's the world capital of Italian ice. It's not. They call it water ice or water, water ice. The real stuff comes from New York. Um, we're going to make that today because we're going to make mango, the number two selling flavor in the world. Uh, mangoes are very tough to do fresh. I would call it impossible because it seems that they're only ripe for a day and a half of, uh, out of every year. You know, kind of like when summer breaks out in North Dakota. And um, you only have about a day and a half. And then there's six <laughs> different varieties of them. So what did I use last time? What am I going to use next time? It's such a hassle 
that everybody tells me, and I agree with them, that the best mango ice I've ever had came from I rice. So we're going to use I rice. The third level where I make most of my <coughs> Italian ices uh, is going to the supermarket and uh, you walk down the ice cream aisle and at the head of the aisle, the ice cream's at the bottom of the aisle, at the head of the aisle, depending on which way you came into the store, the, uh, are bags of frozen fruit. This is fresh fruit, fresh raspberries, blueberries, cherries, uh, grapes, all picked uh, at the height of freshness, put in a bag, no uh, no additives, uh, no syrups, just sealed off, and, and there it is. So I can make a great, the best blueberry Italian ice by going to the supermarket in this size machine, buying four bags of blueberries, put them in the fridge overnight, they thaw, and I just rip them open and pour them in the machine, and there you go. And it's the same next year. It'll be the same next year and the same the year after. And uh, I bought, it's, this is one case where I, I, I usually, you know, I, Jeff has a funny name for the Oreo cookies. What is it, Schmorios? Schmorios. Yeah, sounds like something you'd get at a synagogue. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, I use, you know, just like Jeff, I use Oreo cookies. I don't buy Hydrox cookies or some other brand. But when it comes to the fruit, uh, it's all about being pe picked fresh and put into a bag. It's, it's pretty simple. However, I buy the store brand. Here in Florida, it's called Public Supermarkets. I buy Publix brand because it's the same great quality only, and the competition is Dole Pineapple. They have different types. But Dole Pineapple is designed for you to pour it out into a champagne glass and serve it as a dessert. It's pretty. You know, it's, it would, if, there were, like, if it was like meat grades, it would be, be AAA, you know, pretty or something, or prime. Uh, it's a very attractive fruit. The fruit that's in the um, uh, Publix bag is gonna vary from uh, pretty to you know, not so pretty, uh, but it's the same great fruit. Besides, we're putting it in sugar water, so, so what, what it looks like, we're going to grind it all up anyway, and let the machine do it. So today I am using the mango. We're going to use three and a half quarts of water in the CB350, two cups of the iRice mango base, three pounds of fresh frozen mangoes, which have been thawed, and one and a half pounds of uh, pure cane sugar. We had a question earlier. Um, and I think I forgot what it was. Okay, <laughs> hold on. It was something about the, uh, oh, the fresh or frozen. Oh, yes, I know what it was. Uh, it was asked, what if I take the frozen and put it in the machine? Well, they're frozen, and they will thaw some, but they're still going to be surrounded by some ice, and so you're going to get an iciness to your product, especially in ice cream. In ices, it won't matter so much, it'll melt, but in ice cream, if you have any ice crystals in there, with, when you, with your starting product, you're going to have ice crystals at the end product, so make sure you don't. So let's get this put together. Um, Christy, if you don't mind helping me, I need sure. three and a half quarts of tap water. Okay, well, you can do that. I got your sugar right there. Okay. And the three pounds of mangoes. They're open. Oh, great. Okay, so don't turn them upside down walking over to the machine. No. Okay. Nobody trusts me. Ah, look, I go to pour the product in, and it's going all over the floor, and that's when I get the phone call. I mean, I always get the phone call. I'm available seven days a week, uh, 8 o'clock in the morning till 9 o'clock at night. If we're closed, you call here, you leave your message. If you want to order a part, you'll hear from us the next business day. If you have uh, something went bump in the night, I'll call you right back. And so here's a bump in the night. I was pouring product into the machine, and it's going all over the floor. What's wrong? I said, when did it last run right? Well, when I made uh, raspberry sorbet, and that worked great. Okay, now, now what are you doing? I'm doing mango. Well, you should have done them in reverse, but okay. And it's going all over the floor? Yeah, you didn't close the gate before when you finished the mango. You finished the mango, and you went over here, and you started eating it all, and just say, wait a minute, I'm supposed to sell this stuff. Uh, so, oh, look at another one. Jeez, they're everywhere. Uh -huh. <laughs> Close the gate. Otherwise, it's going all over the floor, and you curse me that the gasket's wrong, the machine leaks, you left the gate open. It's that important. We go along, we're not patting our machines like a nice dog. We're, we're checking them to see that they're closed. Um, so I'm going to mix the sugar and the water. A misconception about mixing sugar and water, you do not need hot water. 
You don't want hot water. Hot water has all the oxygen boiled out of it, and so it tastes terrible. Mm. And you don't, it doesn't take very long. I've got uh, a pound and a half of sugar in here. When I pour this into the machine, uh, or actually I'm going to ask Chrissy to pour it into the machine, when she pours this in, if she ends up with a little string of sugar uh, that didn't dissolve, it doesn't matter. We just used a whole pound and a half. A few grains of sugar won't matter because I didn't stir it an extra 30 seconds. But this is all you need to do. It's, it's that simple. Another benefit, sorry, real quick, about buying frozen fruits, when they thaw, they create this beautiful natural juice. I know you can't really see it, but they, they create a sweet natural syrup uh, juice in here. So that will help add another touch of sweetness and, and sugar to your recipe. Okay. The old time, if you'll pour that in. Yep. The old time Italian ice people uh, oh. were incredibly lazy. Uh, they would pour the water into the machine and then the sugar on top of it and let the machine mix it. Well, and then they wonder why their blades aren't lasting five years, uh, because that acts like sandpaper and just grinds the heck out of the, uh, the blade. So don't do that. Mix it first. It's really simple. You saw me. It wasn't more than 30 seconds. And just pour it right into the machine. And I asked Christy to do it because I rested on the, the lid, as everybody said earlier today, and it goes everywhere. There you go. If you raise it up and pour it in, it won't uh, make a mess. So I'm going to turn this infinite overrun control on. It says make ice cream, but I want to make Italian ices. And I see homemade, dairy-free, custard, super premium, gelato, frozen yogurt. Where's the Italian ice? Oh, more recipes. Italian ice, frozen lemonade, sherbet, sorbet, sorbetto, cream ice, manual speed. I'm going to hit Italian ice and go. My sugar and water is in there. They're all right there, ready to go. I'm going to turn on the freeze because I know nothing's going to happen for the next, you know, six or seven minutes. I mean, it can spin around all at once. It's getting colder, but it's not super cold yet, so it's not going to inhibit pouring anything in. There you go, Steve. So now I'm going to pour my mango chunks in. Most of them. Did you want to pass the bottle around, the sniff over. it, read it? You want to... No? No, no, I'm good, yeah. Oh, okay. Do you want to pass it down? I think I have four, how many videos do I have? 600 or 400? Six, 600, and, 600 almost? Yeah, 648 how to make videos. Uh, one father called me up once, he had a, uh, a seven-year-old and a four-year-old, and he used us by videos like Romper Group. And uh, he said, uh, he looked, he peeked in, and they're watching me on TV, uh, keeping them entertained. And the older one turns to the younger one and says, now don't try this with any other machine but an Emory Thompson. <laughs> and I thought, wow, I've just made stardom. That was cool. Um, so don't try this with any other machine. They won't go in. Yes. Well, if you're going to make a tiny knife without the fruit don't and just the base, are you adding more cups of base, or is that just an additive that... I would. I would add more base if you're not using real mangoes or frozen mangoes, yeah, whichever. Yeah, uh, Christy cut this down overnight from what it was. But we can taste it to see if we need to add any more. Right? I don't know if this will reach, but... Are you going to try it? Yeah. Okay. How are you going to do that without stopping the machine? Can oh. you get a larger container? I got this. All right. Oh my gosh. We're good. We are so good. We're good. Pretty simple, huh? Jeff was in my class in 2008. He sat in the back of the, uh, of the um, class, called his wife Rose on the phone, and said, Rose, you're not going to believe what I'm seeing. If this idiot Steve Thompson can do this, imagine what I could make. And that's a true story. He stopped calling me an idiot because he made so much money. But uh, <laughs> it is that simple. Now, you call up anybody. You call up any other manufacturer, batch freezer, and you tell them you want to make Italian ice. They go, well, uh, we'll teach you how to make vanilla if you buy a machine. Well, we've got these huge amount of videos. Uh, we've got our website full of formulas. We tell you where to buy ingredients. 
uh, I felt, you know, I couldn't do this back in the Bronx because it was the Bronx and all my customers were in Brooklyn and uh, they kind of were connected, if you know what I'm talking about. You, you don't have 2,000 stores just selling your Italian ice without some friends. So I couldn't say a word. Uh, now I'm down here and uh, it's an undisclosed location except to anybody watching this. And uh, I feel pretty safe. So, But you go into any other store and ask them about how to make Italian ice and they'll throw you out. Uh, they will not tell you. It's the most secret stuff in the world. And you're going to get like that too. I mean, if you go into the Italian ice business six months later, someone walks in, you're going to say, oh, no, 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 I can't tell you about this. This, is a, this recipe came from my great-great-grandfather from Genoa, Italy. Well, I've never been to Genoa, Italy, and I'm not Italian, so uh, I learned it by observing from the old guys who didn't think I was noticing anything, <laughs> but they were willing to let me into the store because they wanted to know how to run the machine. So <clears throat> this is the real stuff, uh, and I, I think you'll like that. Any questions so far? The 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 what's the difference between the hardening cabinet and the chest freezer? The chest freezer goes to 10 below, and if you warm it up with, I always use soup, it's easier to understand. If I load it up with 30 gallons of soup, that temperature at 10 below is going right up to plus 50, because it was meant to hold frozen DiGiorno pizzas, not hardened ice cream. I want to save you money, and uh, so you can give me more of your money later. Uh, so I may start you with two chest freezers and tell you that you can, here's the chest freezer, you can only fill it up one level today and that's it because that's not putting as much strain on it, it will harden the ice cream or the ices. Tomorrow we can do a second level, the next day we can do a third level. The, uh, the, camera? the uh, hardening cabinet, this is one that we uh, sell in conjunction with my friend of me, uh, Capigiani, it's made in the USA. And this thing goes to 25 below zero, but it doesn't just go to 25 below zero. It's so powerful, it will hold that temperature uh, no matter what you throw at it. I mean, yeah, it may warm up to 20 below zero, uh, but you can take as much product as you can stuff in here in one day, and it'll harden it hard as a rock. And then I use that as my inventory. I don't leave, dump it all out tomorrow. I leave it in here until I need it. I can open it up, I can say, oh, I need a cherry vanilla. Oh, there it is. I take that out the night before, 25 below zero. You couldn't scoop it with a hammer and chisel, but I'm gonna put it into my serving cabinet, and overnight, it's gonna warm up to plus six for ice cream, plus six, 16 for Italian ice. So, overnight, it'll be ready. These are, these are, say it again. If you don't have the money, you start with two chest feet. Uh, and most people don't have the money. Um, if you're going to go into a moving company, unless you had a lot of money, which you might, you don't go out and buy an 18-wheeler and, and uh, open up Steve's uh, moving company. You, you start with a Ford Econoline van and you start moving someone's couch. And you build up the business from there. And as you're making money, you can spend more money. How about Italian ices? Any questions? Nobody picked up on that there's different types of ices. Uh, a New York Italian ice in this bigger machine <clears throat> is seven pounds of sugar. My secret lemon ice formula, which is at the website, so it's not so secret, is seven pounds of sugar, 14 quarts of water, two quarts of fresh squeezed lemon juice, and there's one other secret ingredient you'll have to call me to get because I am a cheap salesman and I get you to call me. Then I got you on the phone and I'm gonna steal your watch and wallet. Uh, but that is a pure Italian ice formula. Uh, I knew of a couple that came into the Bronx factory and they said, we just spent $10,000 from this old gentleman in Brooklyn for his Italian ice formula. And I rattled it off and they just were like this. And the husband goes, yeah, but you missed one ingredient. I said, yeah, it's." And he said, holy cow, we spent $10,000 and just got it from you for free. That's what we do. We put you into business. That's what our goal is. And if you like what we do, you'll buy a machine. But you're not gonna buy a machine today. You don't have to. You don't have to buy it next month. We've been here 119 years. We can wait. I'm gonna grab that spatula. <laughs> okay. 
Did Sorry. I leave any ingredients out? No. Okay. Uh, so that's the New York Italian ice, seven pounds of sugar. Go down to Philadelphia, and it's called Italian water ice. Doesn't that sound awful? What a horrible name. You know, I, I, I can have some guy come in from, I don't know, um, Cape Town, South Africa. And he says, I want to learn how to make water ice. And I go, let me ask you a question first. When did you leave Philadelphia? And he goes, how'd you know? I said, because you called it water ice. We call it Italian ice. The difference is water ice, Italian water ice, is smoother and creamier than a New York Italian ice. We want some texture. I think it's the difference between uh, a Frito's potato chip uh, that has ridges and one that doesn't have ridges. They're both good potato chips and one has ridges. So the Philadelphia has one pound more. It's eight pounds of sugar. That's what makes it smoother and creamier. That's the secret to everybody's secret Italian ice formula is they're using one pound more sugar to make it and that's all you gotta know. You know everything about it. Unless you wanna go up to Rhode Island where they sell this disgusting stuff that uh, they call slush, but not a Slurpee like 7-Eleven. We sell it in all the amusement parks. We're in every single amusement park around the world of the big chains, and they call it frozen lemonade. It's, it's a better term. And that's not eight pounds of sugar, and it's not New York seven pounds of sugar. It's six pounds of sugar. It's virtually flavorless. And we make thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars selling uh, frozen lemonade machines. So somebody likes this stuff. And uh, so there is a, a third variety that you can make. If you hear people from Rhode Island or Boston, they're talking about slush. Um, it's, it's so popular and uh, the, the, the amusement parks are so rigged that uh, I set up, oh, how am I doing? You're good. Okay. You probably got um, another minute. The, uh, I sold it to uh, one of the three large amusement parks. They all have them, but I, I don't wanna mention the name but this is how scientific they are. I went down after I taught them how to do it. I spent a million dollars with them. They, they gave me a million dollars to set them up in frozen lemonade. And I gave them my secret formula. I come back a month later because it was a good excuse to get out of the Bronx. You know, who wouldn't want to get out of uh, a two murder a week neighborhood and come to Florida? So I come down, I taste the product, and I turn to uh, the chef. I say, who changed my formula? And he goes, oh, it's the suits upstairs. I said, well, why would the suits do that? He said, come with me, I'll show you. It has nothing to do with your product. Your product is great. So we go out, and there's this nice couple, husband and wife and a, a child, and they just bought frozen lemonade. And we stand a safe distance back behind them. Lemonade's in a cup like this with a spoon. It's, we serve it softer. And they're walking down the main aisle of the park. And they're going like this, and they're going like this, and they're eating the product, they're eating the product. And they get to the end, and they've put citric acid into my beautiful lemon ice. If you want more tart, you put more lemon juice in, not citric acid. So the citric acid makes you thirsty. It makes you close up, close up if you use too much of it. So uh, they've got citric acid in my formula. And so they get to the end of the line, and they're thirsty. Well, guess what's at the end of the line? This amusement park counted the steps of what a husband and wife and a small child would take. And guess what? There's Pepsi and there's Budweiser. They're both thirsty. The kid gets a Pepsi and dad gets a Budweiser and mom says, I'm not having either one of that junk. So that's, the whole place is laid out. You know, you might know them for some wizard thing, which I won't mention, but they have stacks of magic wands and the magic wands everybody's got to wear bags like you did today and so judy's wearing a magic wand one judy judy's seven years old and goes by the magic wands and this one magic wand is going hey <laughs> judy go. pick me pick me pick me 25 bucks hey, hey pick me judy and she goes over and, and grabs one no no not that one this one and she grabs another one he doesn't care what she grabs grabs it now mom and dad have to buy it for them. And they've got a closed circuit TV camera watching the kids. And when they get near that, those wands and they're looking at them, the wands start talking. And they always say, no, no, not that one, this one. And they sell mom and dad 
uh, a wand. And before Judy goes away, the wand says, boy, I'm thirsty. I wish I had a birch beer. You're ready. <laughs> and they sell him a birch no, beer. No, go ahead. Okay. I thought you wanted a wand. No. I, gave, I was giving you your wand. All right. Can you all see me? <laughs> we have to do this for the camera so they can see properly. All right. Look how fast that comes out. I can make it even faster. I'm just going to shake it up. Mix it. Not mix it. Spread it out. What a beautiful product. Where do you taste this? All right. The other Take it spread. away. Ready? Yeah. And none of this Namby Pamby looking at it and watching it like that. Open the gate. We're here to make money. We want to get the job done and go on to the next one. So let the machine do the work for you. And don't try this with anyone else's machine. You'll be here for 10 minutes trying to get this out. That was a uh, six, five liter pan. And so what we actually got out of this is, I advertise it as a six quart machine. I actually know it's uh, a little over seven quarts, but I'm not gonna tell you that. Because it depends on the speed you run it at. If you run it real slow, you're gonna get less product. And that's it. Let's just look at that. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? And see the nice consistency, nice and stiff. And wait till you try this. You want a spoon? Steve, did you want a spoon? Sure. You want and on this one, I won't ask my question of what would you do to improve it because I don't care. <laughs> and I'm going to smack you if you try to tell me. Is it because it's your flavor? No, it's because it came from an old-fashioned recipe from a man from Genoa, Italy. I thought it was Bologna. Uh, well, that was last week. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's good stuff. You're going to like that. Actually, if I was to do it again, I might put a little bit more mango base in. Yeah. But it's, it's really good. What's your favorite ice cream? My, oh, this, you had to ask that. Yeah. My favorite ice cream. I used to get in real trouble for this because you've got my, you got, you got my guy in uh, uh, New Orleans. You got my uh, guy in uh, Savannah. You got my guy up in Cape Cod. You got him over in Boston. And I, you know, if I said one name, everybody else in the world is insulted because they all make the best. Uh, so I used to come up with this trite answer that was, I make the best. And they all just walk away disappointed. So now I've lost both ways. So now I'll actually tell you the truth. My grandfather put a company in uh, Colorado into business in about 1910. And they still make what I think is the best ice cream in the world. Uh, it's kind of icy. It's low, lower in the fat level and still calling it ice cream. Um, and it's called Bluebell. And I love Bluebell. I make the world's greatest coffee ice cream. They make the world's second greatest coffee. They have three different types of vanilla. They have natural vanilla, which is milk, cream, sugar, skim milk. Uh, they have homemade vanilla, which is those ingredients plus a lot more. And um, natural, homemade, and there's a third one. But they make three different types of vanilla. And uh, it's fantastic. And some of the other flavors I'm not so keen on, but their vanilla and their coffee are terrific. So that's my favorite ice cream. In my freezer at home right now, there's a tub of Bluebell vanilla and a tub of uh, Bluebell um, coffee. It's not rated the best, though, is it? Rated the best is individual. Yeah, but like, you know, people rank them and they publish them in magazines. Bluebell is probably not rated as high because it has a lower butter fat or something. Yeah, it is a lower butter fat. And the highest butter fat is haagen -Dazs. And I worked with Reuben Madison, his mother, to start haagen -Dazs. And when they were you know, a small shop in the Bronx. All these big companies that you see all began just like you, only going back to, you know, 1905. Um, but uh, that's how they began, and then they grew and grew and grew. Most of them stayed at one store. My generation, everybody stayed at one store. Um, Christie's generation is going to go for three to five stores. Um, that's, that's just the way it is. It's, it's good, isn't it, Jeff? Real good. Very refreshing. Yeah, I, yeah. I had a big chunk of mango. Could you cut the mango down? Or I could, but you're, isn't it impressive that you yeah, got a big chunk of mango? Good. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just you know, it's, it's, it's like watermelon. How could you eat watermelon without the seeds? Right. Ah, I found a way. I make a great watermelon. I get a seedless watermelon, or I, on that one, I also use the iRice, and I throw in mini chocolate chips. 
Because what, we, what do we do with the seeds? We spit them out. But wouldn't it be fun to be able to eat them? So I make a watermelon Italian ice that's got chocolate chips, mini, cho mini chocolate chips. It's really cool. And all these products are really refreshing. On a hot day here in Florida, with our high humidity, if you ate Haagen-Dazs or Ben & Jerry, the other, another company we put in business, you're going to sweat to death. I mean, you're going to walk outside, you go, and, and you, your body just feels awful because it's holding 16% fat. Bluebell is 10% fat. We're 10% fat. That's federal minimum to call this stuff ice cream. Um, and I learned that from Baskin Robbins, another one of our customers that we put in business. Baskin Robbins is a real cheap ice cream. There's just no way around it. It's really cheap. It's bordering on super cheap. Uh, they run a 10% butter fat, but they so over flavor it that you don't notice the fat content, you notice the flavor. You go, wow, that's ra ra raspberry. That's fantastic. If I hand you a pale pink ice cream, you say, Oh, that's delicious. What is it? I just failed as an ice cream maker. You should know that that's raspberry. So the secret to ice cream is the ingredients. And Jeff taught me, you buy cheap ingredients, you'll have cheap ice cream. That's like early this morning you said, well, what if I leave the walnuts out? Well, if it's maple walnut ice cream and you leave the walnuts out, why am I bothering to buy it? You know, you buy it for the ingredients. Ingredients are everything. I can make pretty good product on the competitor's machines. I can't do everything uh, this one can of putting in everything, but I can make you something that'll pass for good ice cream. But we all want to make fabulous ice cream. And that's where Jeff says, and it's, it goes against your grain, he says it doesn't matter what it costs. Uh, because if it's fantastic, they're going to line up for it. I mean, if I sell to a Little League ball game and it's cheap junk, I'm selling it because the kids are hot and they want something cold. But if I have a store specializing in ice cream or ices, and they're lined up out the door, I know I've hit a home run because I'm making uh, something that they can't get anywhere else. And that's why you're here. That's, that's what it's all about. We're going to break in a couple of minutes uh, for uh, lunch and then start this all over again, I think, or unless they have uh, questions answered. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to ask Christy. Funny. <laughs> Who's in oh, charge here? All right, anyway. so we're going to do a brief questions answered. And I hope you have some questions because we started a new segment that um, is at our website now, and now it's open to everybody. Every Wednesday, Christy, before Wednesday, usually Monday or Tuesday, Christy and I sit down here and we answer questions that uh, people have called in uh, over uh, this week, and we answer their questions. Because if, it, it's kind of like writing to your congressman. They say that. Uh, you say, oh, I'm not going to bother writing my congressman. Well, if you write to your congressman, the congressman knows that if you're really pissed off about this, there's a thousand other people for that one letter that are also pissed off. So if they get 300 letters, that's a lot of people angry, and they sit up and take notice. So same theory here. If we get a question coming in saying, um, uh, why is my uh, ice cream uh, icy? Uh, there's probably another 40 or 50 people that week who are asked, thinking the same question, but were too embarrassed to ask. Uh, they say, oh, gee, I should have known that. So that's what our questions answered does every Wednesday. It's 10 minutes long. And we're going to try to duplicate this. The only problem is we don't have a list of questions. So we need you to come up with the questions. Ready, Jeff? Otherwise, what? we're just going to talk forever. You know, I like to hear myself talk. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, so you have zest and multiple and you have this little note. If you use a lemon abstract note, do you, do you squeeze the lemons or what do you, you what do you do with the lemons? Like how do you do the lemon in, in an ice? That's that's your lemon ice formula. Okay. The world's best the lemon ice, ice formula. Oh, yeah. So you just gave away my secret ingredient, but let's hope they already tuned well, out. On here. I know. Yeah. It's okay. it's the zest. It's taking six California lemons okay. and just using a cheese grater and and then you know put on some you know brass knuckles because if you hit your knuckles on that cheese grater, it's gonna hurt. Uh, but you end up with a pure white product with little specks of lemon in it. It's Surely you product. zest. Yes, I do truly <laughs> zest. Yeah. Um, yes, fresh squeezed lemons. A lot of work. Hire someone else to do it. Uh, but it makes all the difference in the world. Now, that said, if you start getting into this uh, big time, 
<clears throat> you can go to the place where bakers go to buy flour and sugar and, and flavors. Bakery supply houses are in every city. Bakery supply houses can get you a five gallon pail of fresh squeezed lemon juice with the pulp already in it, refrigerated. It's not from concentrate or any of that silliness. It's just fresh squeezed lemon juice and a five gallon pail and it'll be kept in your refrigerator. Uh, so then when you want to make this lemon ice, you just ladle out uh, two quarts and pour it into the machine. Okay. It's really that simple and, and it's great. It, it saves you all that work. You pay a little more for it, but if you added up the time it would take you to squeeze five gallons of lemon juice, uh, plus going to a psychiatrist for therapy for squeezing five gallons of lemon juice, uh, it's really worth it. Okay. That's it. It's simple. Who else? So I assume that's the same for oranges and limes. Yeah. Um, uh, not, yeah. Limes, yes. Oranges, buy simply orange juice. It's 100% yeah. juice. Um, it's, there's nothing else in it but 100% squeezed okay. orange juice. And get the high pulp because customers will like to see that pulp in there. Um, they'll think that you squeezed it, but you didn't. Yeah, the people who won't buy uh, high pulp orange juice for their home uh, really like to see it in, in the orange ice. I don't like pulp when I drink orange juice. <laughs> no, nobody seems to. My grandpa it's did. It's all pulp fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Please, does anybody have a question for Jeff? We've got to shut him up. <laughs> yes. I just had a question. So for lemon ice cream, would you do, use the same, basically, kind of the, just the lemon juice, the lemon zest, sugar, would you... Because I tried, I was I was making a lemon ice cream, and I noticed adding the lemon juice like instantly made the base like really thick, like it curdled. I think Not one curdled, of the important but. parts, Steve said, the zest. I think that's important in lemon. Anything you make with lemon. Yeah, I did the zest too. Yeah. I like. I personally liked it. I. It wasn't quite. Who what, cares? What he liked. He doesn't. But I, you know, figured. <laughs> you know what? Next Wednesday, you're going to see that on questions answered is how do you keep the uh, lemon juice from curdling? There is an answer. The, the I don't recipe is in the book. Oh, you know how to do it? <laughs> you know how to do it, Christy? It's in the book. No, no. It's just, that I think, well, it's your formula, but it's in the book. <laughs> it's lemon juice and then adding just a little bit more of sugar and zest. That's what the recipe had in it. Um, I don't have the exact formula, but I'm sure. Um, for those that it's watching, if you go to YouTube and you type in Emery Thompson machine in YouTube, uh, an easy way to narrow your flavors down, or if you're looking for something specific, type in Emery Thompson lemon ice cream or Emery Thompson strawberry, and then it'll pull up either strawberry gelato, Italian ice, whatever. So just type in a keyword and you'll find that video specifically what you're looking for. Some of the videos do have the formula already there as soon as it starts, so kind of fast forward of maybe a minute, 40 seconds to a minute, and pause it, and it might, you might find the formula there. Some of the videos have Jeff with hair. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. I might have missed it at the beginning, but I'm noticing that these machines have the, um, I guess, a screen where you can change what you want to make. Mm -hmm. Yes. The smaller machine, does it only make one thing only, or do you just have to change things? Up? No, it, it can. The uh, the little one, the 200, can make a lot of different products. Mm -hmm. It's preset to make super premium ice cream. Uh, just by changing the time a little bit, because Super Premium and Gelato are so close. Mm -hmm. Super Premium is like haagen it's high fat. The Gelato is very low fat. So with the one, just the one speed and a little change time, uh, altering the time, uh, I can do Gelato in that machine. Italian ice really doesn't much matter. So you've got Italian ice, Sorbet, Sorbetto, can be made in the little one as well as the big ones. We make it simpler on the big one by just having a button that pushes sorbet. But uh, dairy fat, uh, milk, cream, uh, is, is fat cells. And when you agitate them, when you spin them, they expand. And that's how we, for uh, what we call homemade ice cream, we put in, for every quart of mix we put in, we get two quarts of ice cream. Uh, Italian ice doesn't do that. Uh, Italian ice expands about 20% uh, because 17% actually because that's what water does. If you put your boat on a lake in Michigan, a wood boat, and you walk away for the winter, your boat's going to come back crushed because the water expanded and crushed the wood boat. 
so by just agitating it, it's going to do Italian ice. It does about uh, two thirds of what the bigger machines will do. Uh, so it's a it's a good machine to get you into business, but you're going to find out very quickly that you should have bought a larger one because you never anticipated business would be so big, though we know it's going to be. Don't worry, the resale value on my machines is incredible. Uh, you can go find uh, 150 Capigianis and other brands at uh, eBay, and you'll be lucky if you see one or two Emory Thompsons, and uh, most of them are older than me, uh, because nobody gives them up. So uh, if you do decide that you need uh, a bigger machine, you can sell it off at eBay within a few hours. I like to recommend, because I did it myself, um, uh, you can uh, use it to uh, take a relative that you wish lived in another state and move them to another state by giving them your machine and say, here, I'm going to set you up in business. Yeah, yeah, Actually, I didn't do it. I just picked that up. Um, because she's watching this video. <laughs> One other question. And I'm in deep trouble. <laughs> Out of curiosity, um, with starting like just a small ice cream shop, would you say like one machine would be sufficient to kind of kick it or like what would be the recommendation like how much equipment i saw the breakdown that you had here but so me. it depends um the cv350 is very popular because it's very affordable mm -hmm. you know most people have you know the 14 2 ready to purchase for machinery and start and go into business a lot of people don't have you know the 30 something thousand for the floor model if you do Please do. Go for it. Get that machine if you have the means to do so. Get the larger model because you're, you're going to be very thankful later down the road. Um, the CB350 is more than capable of opening a storefront, but keep in mind you're going to be working day and night just trying to keep up with your demand. Um, you know, and some people have the means to go get for a larger model and they don't because they're thinking, oh, I don't need it. But you also have to keep in mind that your time is money. So you are going to be working 14 hours a day. Well, that's costing you your, that's a labor cost because you have to pay yourself too. You have to keep that in mind too. Yes. Go ahead, Jeff. You had a comment on that. No, the real world is you don't pay yourself for your time. When you open up a business, your time is devoted to making money. And if you, you don't, spend 14 excuse hours. Excuse me, I didn't interrupt you. Oh, you, you, don't, you don't pay yourself a salary. What you do is you put it back in the business. When, when each one of us opens a store, yeah, we're going to be there 12 hours a day. We're not paying ourselves for 12 hours a day. We're doing it to build a business. And the, the, we'll reap the rewards of that very soon, months. Uh, the machine that you'll all have in business is the 24-quart machine. It's the standard in the world, in the industry. That's what you need. However, I started a business with a six-quart machine. And the six-quart machine, yeah, I made ice cream more and more. But don't forget, in the beginning, you're not making a lot of ice cream because you don't have that many customers. Right. So it's a perfect opportunity to build your business. And when you get to the point where you're working, where you're making ice cream four days a week, then you know it's time. But to make ice cream uh, twice a week, three times a week, uh, long hours, don't worry about it because you're building your business. You're, you're laying the, found work, the, the groundwork for your future. And when it comes time that you need the bigger machine, you'll know it and you can afford it. So, so as a strategy, like, do you come in and make, like, say, okay, today, the first half of the day, I'm going to do chocolate and kick that out. Then I'm well, going to do vanilla. It, you know what? It'll depend on how busy you are. Mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning, you'll make ice cream once a week on that mm -hmm. CB350 mm -hmm. because you'll only need, you might put in five hours doing it, but you'll only need 30 gallons of ice cream. Got it. The next week, you might need 40 gallons of ice cream. And then in six months, you're going to be making 100 gallons of ice cream. And then you, you'll be putting in many, many hours. But you know what? This business is yours. And those hours you put in, it's a joy. It's hard work. Yeah, five hours making ice cream is hard work. But it's a joy because it's yours. <laughs> and every gallon you make is contributing to your future. You're going to get 10 servings out of a gallon. You're going to charge $6 a serving. So every gallon you make is $60.
and the profit is ridiculous, so you don't have to worry about the, the triple net or anything. Right, right. So start with a machine you can afford. I'd rather start with the six-quart machine and pay for it than borrow money and buy the bigger one, even though we'll all have the bigger one. There's 100%, no question. When, you, when it comes to the point where you need the bigger one, guess what you'll have in the bank? The money. You'll have the money to buy it. So the hours, I never agreed with the fact that we have to pay ourselves for our time. We're investing. We're investing in ourselves, in our future, our kids, our family. That's what we're doing. So paying yourself, don't worry about it. Work hard. And then you'll afford, then you'll get the fruits of your labor. My last question for right now, because I do talk a lot, but um, how long do you keep this ice cream before you'll notice that you'll get like a freezer burn? Because like you'll pump out <laughs> Steve ice has cream. the best answer for that in the world. Okay. I asked him the same thing. And the answer was, if you made uh, uh, bubblegum licorice. Bubble licorice ice cream and you put it in the freezer and six weeks later it's getting frosty on top, well, guess what you made? You made the wrong flavor. Because nobody's buying it. Nobody likes it. Got it. Nobody wants bubblegum. And you'll ice find ice out real fast what the good flavors are. Got it. And I, I dump ice cream all the time. I still do it. Okay. Because it, people don't like it. I'll give you an example. I love Sambuca. I love Sambuca. That's that licorice. Uh, uh, and so I said, well, let's make, let's make. I made Slambuca ice cream. Slambuca. It was fantastic. Nobody bought it. Right. Uh, nobody else likes that. <laughs> so I took six gallons and I dumped it because that's the end of it. And you move on. You learn. You know, it's filed away here, mm -hmm. but you learn. Yeah. And I, if you have to throw it away, you throw it away. I, I make uh, coffee banana. And I love <laughs> coffee banana ice cream. <laughs> wow. I, I, mean, I can't get enough coffee banana ice cream. Now, it will sit in that freezer forever um, because coffee banana is a lousy flavor for everybody else. I make coffee banana because I'm the president of the company and everybody wants to steal my ice cream, but nobody steals coffee banana. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you steal people's ice cream. I have to oh, put, I do. I have to put notes. Do not touch. I, well, that's, I, that's why I preface on the president of the company. I have a license to steal. <laughs> but that is, that is a good point. And, and it may come down in the short one when you have only, say, to, total of 12 flavors, that you're having to make a decision between uh, getting rid of the red raspberry in favor of salted caramel. But the numbers will tell you, yeah, mm -hmm. we sold a lot of uh, red raspberry, but boy, we can't keep that salted caramel in stock. So guess who gets thrown out because we only have so many spaces. Really important, don't fall in love with your own ice cream. Uh, oh, and one other thing along that line, we're all eating a lot of ice cream today. When I teach someone how to make ice cream, if I, I used to do it going to their store and all way back when. And uh, We'd make ice cream, and then we'd go another flavor. We'd make about 12 flavors. So I turned to one person, I said, uh, let's see, 12 times 2, that's 24. Did you mean to eat 24 ounces of ice cream today? And the person said, oh, I didn't eat 24 ounces of ice cream. I said, you took a big, healthy scoop, a, a spoon of each ice cream and tasted it to see if it was good. You just ate 24 ounces of ice cream. You do that every day in and out, and you won't be here in five years. You know, it's not good for your health. So. Don't fall in love with your ice cream. Taste it once, know that the flavor is great, and then, uh, you know, that's it. And then duplicate it. That's and then duplicate right. it over and over and over without changing it. What's the difference between sorbet, sorbetto, and Italian ice? The name and the price that you can get for it. Oh, okay. Italian ice is the bottom line, and I can get $2 for an Italian ice. Uh, if I call it sorbet, I can probably get, uh, I would now say it's called fresh fruit sorbet. Fresh fruit sorbet, and I would sell it at an art show and get $3.50, or I can uh, sell it at a high end Italian restaurant as sorbetto and get $9. It's all the same stuff. And don't let anybody tell you different. They, some, somebody who doesn't know the business or sells machines and doesn't know the business will say, oh, well, sorbetto's got dairy in it. No, it doesn't. That's sherbet. And cream ice. Uh, and cream ice. <laughs> So that's all. It's just the price. I used to come out with a squeeze cup and a champagne glass and, and say the only difference between these two is the price. It's the same mango that you just ate. Um, how often 
so every night you have to clean the machine, take the parts off? Oh, absolutely. Them? Okay. So yeah, it's like you know, at the end of the day? at the it, it takes you maybe five to ten minutes. Okay. At the end of the day, after you have dinner, you don't leave the plates sitting around the counter. I would, you know, but I'm married. Uh, you, you don't leave the plates sitting around and say, well, I'm going to use them tomorrow night. That would There's be disgusting. Tasmanian devil in the kitchen. He opens everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll clean it at the end of the day, but you try to make as many flavors in a day. You don't start off and say, I'm going to make cherry today and then quit. And then tomorrow I'm going to make red raspberry. Make it all on Tuesdays and Thursdays and, and you'll be good. Anybody else? Good. I'm starved. Well, you guys yik yak while I go get lunch set up. So give me five minutes. So what do you want to talk about, Jeff? She said we could yik yak. Oh, yik yak. <laughs> yik yak and how I disagree with Jeff. Well, of course he did. Well, that's Jeff's theory, honestly, and that's what Jeff knows. It's I've called, talked to hundreds of people with the different stories. It's called point counterpoint. <laughs> Can you see she's taking over my spot eventually? She takes offense every time I say something. I know, so she's going to be perfect to work with you in the, you know, 40 years from now. Yeah, everybody says, all we do, Jeff and I do is argue. And so now you've got a second one. Thank you. I, that's You're what I needed. I know, yeah, exactly. I was hoping that would evolve that way. I, I planned on it. I can only talk from experience in opening ice cream stores. Uh, that's that. That's a pretty good start. Yeah. Still doesn't mean you're wrong sometimes. I'm never wrong. Well, in my opinion. <laughs> Was I wrong? Never, right? No. All right. We are going to stand up, and those of you who don't have any questions are now going to rush the stage and ask a million questions. Because we've done this so many times, we know exactly what's going Hey, I just wanted to ask you a question. Right? If that's what you're thinking, isn't it? <laughs> All right. So we're going to get the food in here. We'll have a okay. nice lunch. Uh, there is water there. Uh, I'll find the ice and we'll have sodas. And anything you need, you can come into my office and see me. I'm going to meet with one gentleman right away. And then uh, anybody else, you're welcome to stop by in my office. OK, good. Did you have the one away? Or do you still have more? We have more. You want some more? I would love some more. That's okay. my question. All right. So would he. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anyone. I know where it's hidden. OK. Ready, Mike? Yes, sir. All right. All right, this is the first for you and for me, saffron ice cream. I told you earlier, I came in this morning and took the saffron, ground it up, and uh, it added a little cream with it and infused it. And now look at that color. Can you see the color of that? Yeah. It's, it's blooming. It's blooming. It was very, it was white when I first started. Then it got a little yellow. Now it's, uh, yeah. Has anybody had saffron? Yeah. Yeah? In rice. In rice. That's not really saffron. Huh? All right. So we'll, uh, we'll put our normal five quarts in to make a half batch in the machine. And I guess that's it. We'll just add this stuff. Now, I don't know how much to add. You know, there's no recipe for this. So we'll just, uh, we'll just add it. <laughs> we have this much, which is one of those little jars. You know, it's uh, uh, that a quarter of an ounce or something. No sugar? You're not going to put any sugar in that? No, I'm not going to start with any, but we'll see what happens. Okay. What about... Will you put vanilla in there? Five ounces of vanilla? Yeah, we'll put vanilla in. Okay. And we're also going to put in, uh, when I read online, it said use cardamom, cardamom, the spice, so I bought that. Oh, here it is. And I put um, a little bit. You can see, actually, you can't even see how much I put in. It's so little. But I put a little of that in, and we'll use some vanilla. Um, and we'll see what happens. I don't know. Oh, it also said to use a little sweetened condensed milk. So that's what this is. Yeah, that'll sweeten it. Right. 
Yes. Thank you. All right. So, eek. We'll give it a shot. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Uh, how much should we... Uh, how much are we making? Are we making a full batch or a half batch? Well, uh, let's see. <laughs> Now let me ask you a question, since you've been sitting here for a couple hours, suppose we taste it and it's too much, what can we do? Add some more mix, of course. Uh, we'll add a little of this. <laughs> oh my. I've never used this. Is it always this thick? Or? Yeah, thick. It is? Okay. How much do you think we ought to add of this? All right, we'll add that. Uh, and then it said... Uh, like pistachio nuts in the saffron ice cream. Uh, they didn't have any, so I bought like a little nut mix with fruits and raisins. That should be okay, right? No. What do you mean, no? Who said no? Why not? Because you've got good ice cream and you're throwing in stale stuff. Stale? It's fresh. I just bought it. It's going to be gross. but. Well, let's have a discussion here. I say dump everything in the kitchen. So, let's pay attention. So, just no discussion, show of hands. Do we add the nuts? Do we not add the nuts? Oh, you guys. Oh, I'm the only one who likes nuts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, it was like nuts. Oh, okay. Let's see what it tastes like. Can we like taste it first and then you come back and add some? Like, no. Wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted them. It can be a topic. <laughs> I think there's too much of this stuff in there. <laughs> I think we should maybe add a little more mix. Uh, who has had this stuff before? Yeah, yeah. Who has had this before? Has anybody ever had saffron before? No? Come here. Jenny, you can take the taste tester. You gotta turn, we don't see your face. <laughs> it's pretty good, huh? I mean, it's different. That'll work, right? No, it doesn't taste like, it doesn't taste it, like something I should be eating. Right, you see, it's not, this is not an American ice cream. This is a, a foreign ice cream. It's different. Um, and, and I've had ice creams from different countries. This is not American vanilla or chocolate or strawberry. This is what we would call an exotic. It's a different flavor, isn't it? Careful. Now, let me, uh, after sampling it, we're not right home. Huh? <laughs> What would you do? You know, I don't like things too sweet. Too sweet Is this going to be a long story? I, I just want to know. Sugar. No, I get sugar? I don't like that. Super would it sweet? Need like a savory it needs sugar? sugar? Really? Well, brown sugar would be the way to go since it's a... Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I want to taste that right there. Well, let me tell you something. I don't care. <laughs> If you don't want to taste it, I'll still sleep tonight.
We'll add a little brown sugar. And that would be a good taste of that. What? I think that would be a good taste of that. Don't ask. Well, you know, this might just save me a lot of money. Yeah. Don't have to make it anymore. Are we ready? Yeah. Can you taste it? No. Did no. You put vanilla in it, Steve? No, I did. Oh. Vanilla. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're right. I'll be right back, Jeff. Okay. That should do it. Now I'm excited. Let's try it. Hey, you, come here. Come here. Much better. Come here. Ready? I'm ready. Okay. Let's see. Different, mm -hmm. it's right? Different. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Because it almost tastes like a fragrance. It tastes like a or something. It tastes what? Like a fragrance. Like a fragrance. It sounds weird. When you breathe. Like a refrigerant? No, like fragrance. Fragrance. A fragrance, like, right? Like, Hopefully that's what it's supposed to be. Like. That would be bad. But I don't feel like I should eat a fragrance. Right, and that's why I'm looking at him like that's what it's supposed to be. Well, you know why? It's now, a flower. By the way, what do you think now? It's a flower. I think you should add it. Hey! <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> All right. Now I can't wait to taste it. Jeff, it's a flower. Is that right? It is. Well, that's the reason why it tastes like the fruit. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, yeah. we were thinking earthy. I was thinking it was I'm it's a, it's from a flower. Yeah. So that's flower. why it tastes like fruit. Yeah. I was thinking it was going to be earthy. No, I'm, it's supposed to be uh, uh, fragrant, floral, and sweet. That's what you, that, okay, so I get that. That's we should have discussed that, that first <laughs> before we started this. Probably adding. wouldn't hurt if we added these. Oh, I don't have those. Look, something. We'll see yeah. what happens. But right? I think you that. Now that I understand the concept and the taste, it, it makes sense. It's not bad. I can go with that. I'm going to ask Steve to pay me the 150 I spent on it anyway. Right. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. <laughs> well, we added this stuff. Yeah, and you put too much in. Um, I don't know. You know, it's it's an unknown thing. It's 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 uh, it's foreign. You know, other countries don't have ice cream like we do. It's not necessarily sweet. It's not vanilla, chocolate, strawberry. But don't most recipes say a pinch of saffron? Yeah. And you put the whole thing in? Yeah. All 150 bucks? Yeah. You only live once, right? <laughs> Unless the saffron kills you. Right. <laughs> Unless it kills you. Well, we'll see what happens. And I had two of them taste it, and they made great suggestions. Add vanilla, which we did, and add brown sugar, which we did. So, hey, throw it out. I don't care. <laughs> now, see, you hear what she said? It might taste better cold. It might taste better with a scoop of chocolate ice cream on it. It, it, what is the expression? You can't shine. No, I can't say that. You can't, can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. Right now we have a sow's ear in there. It might taste better if you hand out $10 bills with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see what happens, all right? So, We'll see. We'll see what happens. And don't worry because if you don't like it, it's okay. Throw it away because then they're making 
split? You have one more thing to make, don't you? Banana split. Banana split. I mean, life's getting better every minute. So if we don't like it, throw it away and eat banana split ice cream. How's that? What are you eating? Something that's stronger than what I'm going to taste. Stronger? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that. Let's see. Now that everything's mixed up in there. Getting better. <laughs> but it's different. You know, we're used to sweet, creamy ice cream. Uh, a lot of countries don't have that. They have... Uh, come are on. You, are you planning a trip over to Iran and you're going <laughs> to sell this there? That's where I bought this from. I know. <laughs> well, we'll see. Whatever it is, it is. Of course, probably adding a jar of this wouldn't hurt. <laughs> so any questions? No, we're all on anticipation. Well, you want to try a little here? Oh, no. No, try this. No. Why? I value my stomach. Oh, come on. No, thank you. Live on the wild side. Ah, uh, that's a used spoon anyway. I'm uh, not. You try it. So, a lot of the different ice cream shops have the bright colors. It's different. Baskin Robbins. Are they adding, like, uh, color flavoring to that to magnify and bring it up? Or what is it that's being added to the ice cream to change the you know, if you don't try, you continuous freezer. So these are batch freezers. And these are handmade in batches. The continuous freezers are these massive vats and lines and tubes and everything that just constantly keep pumping milk and cream and freezing it and then goes into individual tubs that you see like our pints or into the three gallon ones that go off to all their stores. So they have to use artificial flavorings and colors just to make it um, that taste like that. That's the beauty of an Emory Thompson. There's no other batch freezer that you can do that where you can dump cherries and bananas and nuts and everything into it. So that's what makes you different from your competitors. So instead of selling vanilla ice cream with Oreos tossed in it, you can sell cookies and cream ice cream with real Oreos because your Oreos are incorporating into your mix. And so you truly are having Oreo ice cream. So that's why it's bright in color. Now green mountain flavors, that's that um, green packet that you guys have, the folder. He is all natural colors. So instead of having red dye number 40, he uses beets uh, to extract that red color. So it's not, you know, going to taste like beets, but it's going to have that color of it. Because we just ordered some of those because we wanted to try them because I want to try to keep dyes away as much as I can. Have you tried them before? Green Mountain flavors? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. There's quite a few bottles right there. Um, those ones with the little white caps, that's all Do you Green use Mountain. The flavorings as well as the I have used his flavorings and he has emulsifiers and extracts. So they're both different. Um, <laughs> Stan is a scientist, so keep that in mind. So he's all about numbers and being precise and formulas and measuring by weight and volume, uh, weight versus volume, to make sure everything is 100% is accurate. So when you do work with Green Mountain, you have to be very precise with it because it is pretty potent on most of it. Um, but it's a, it's a great alternative uh, instead of using red dye 40 or like mango, I rice, they have to use an artificial coloring to make it that mango. Um, but if you want to just do fresh mango ice, you can get a, because um, if you put fresh mangoes, it's not going to make it that pretty orange that you're used to seeing. So that's when Green Mountain Flavors comes in handy to have a natural orange color. Do you use the mango for the ton of ice, like the mangoes use the I rice, and you use it with this? Green Mountain one? I have not. So there's so that's a good little topic. I'm sorry, Jeff, did you wanna Jeff? Not ready yet. No? Okay. So when you work with Italian ices, I like to stick with bases like this versus this. Um, reason is this has got texture, like Steve was talking about. It's bulky, it's thick, it's gonna give your Italian ice body. If you were to do sugar water and then dump that in there, it's going to be kind of wonky. You know, it's not going to have any texture or, or body to it. So I like to use bases and real fresh fruits. Now, if you're going to dump 
whole mess of like um, like the wine we were talking about, the wine sorbet with wine and berries and sugar, and then you wanted to add some flavorings, definitely go for it. But if you're gonna put nothing in it and you're just wanting to have that flavor, go with the base if you can, um, so that way it has some body to it. Oh, this is actually, um, oh no, I thought it said beet. Oh, here it is. So here is a red beet juice that I was talking about that he uses. So this is what's to give that natural red color. You guys can pass it around if you like. Coloring. Absolutely, you definitely can. And, and, and I it's really not do. Modify the flavor? No, no, it won't. Because you have to use so little. Okay, it's. Go. The Iranian atomic bomb. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everybody's so silent. <laughs> All right, where's my spoonful? I'll go over and get one. Yeah, get a spoonful. I'll be, the, I'll be the first guinea pig. Go ahead. I got ready. Don't show a face. Are you kidding? Wait, 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 wait. I'll do it with you. Forgotten country. Wait, ready? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? What's that? What's that? What is that? Rocky Road? I don't know. There's nuts and raisins in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Peanuts and raisins. You know, add to that oh, Iranian. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. That's a good thing. How do I take that as a compliment? <laughs> I didn't say it was a compliment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just little taste. Just little bit. You, you compared it to my Sharknado. Like yeah. that? I still win the title. It's not that bad. Oh, really? Yeah, it's not oh, really? bad. Okay. I can't yeah. beat that. It's not bad. And in fact, it may be good. I mean, you're going to trust a guy who thinks Bluebell is the best ice cream in the world? <laughs> who, who has kids? Little kids? Okay. Every time I see uh, or hear of saffron, I always think of uh, ratatouille. 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 Maybe that's where I got no. yeah. yeah, Maybe that is what it is. Uh, what was his name? The rat. Yeah, what was his name? Oh, my gosh. Was he the chef? Look, hey, no. Siri, what's the rat's name for ratatouille? Soon as it's... <laughs> this is different. Remy. Remy, that's Remy, it. Yes. That's it. And then uh, Linguini was um, yes. his master or whatever you it's want to call it. Movie. What would we do without Hey Siri? Oh, I love Siri. Siri's my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I win a lot of arguments with that one. Yeah. So do you all want to just wait until everybody has it to try it at the same time? Or you guys just want to? Yeah? Okay. I think that's more fun. So Mike, you'll have to put the camera on the audience. These spoons really have a great texture, like you said. Yeah. I it, like them. I like them, too. Well, and they're user-friendly, and, you know, little toddlers and stuff. And they're a little bit longer than most. Mm -hmm. so, and, and they're wider, so it's easy to grab. Mm -hmm. As long as it doesn't grow in you. After the initial realization that it's not American ice cream. But it wasn't nearly as strong and intense as everybody was leading, leading me to believe. It's not overdone. No. No. And, and it has a floral... Did you taste it? Yeah, yeah and if, you, if, you, if you're pushing the, something that's saffron and rice, it immediately makes you think of the Arab countries. It could be a big hit. You may be there is the a verge. segment of the population that will buy it. Yeah, you may be on the verge. <laughs> okay, nobody take a bite until everybody has one. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, I don't know if we have to save it Don't try it yet. Oh, yeah, we'll save it. Okay. <laughs> Don't try it yet. <laughs> you have to. You have to. It's a group. It's a participation. So we're all doing it one time, huh? Everybody's going to do it at once. It's like when you guys always shot tequila here and nobody's going to do it. It looks like mustard yep. and mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. Yep, instead of red wine number 40. It looks like mustard and mayonnaise combined together. Jeff, you got to look at everybody. Is everybody ready? Yeah. 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 Yeah
No, not really. Oh, I thought you grabbed one. <laughs> I'm sorry. You got it? Or wait, are you here? We're going to call this uh, the potato salad. Jeff, you got to tell them on the count of three. Right? Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> we got an okay. We got a shaking head no. This lady is about to. I think it needs to be a little sweeter. <laughs> Get me out of here, <laughs> quick. Sweeter. Sweeter. Could have been sweeter. Sweeter and That's I definitely would not put, like I wouldn't have put the raisins and stuff in this. But I, I intentionally didn't grab one of those in my bag. So. <laughs> I think a little sweeter. <laughs> okay. There's a problem with that, though. It'll never be made again. I don't know. Really? I'm sure you can get imitation saffron. <laughs> what about a saffron vanilla? Like with the vanilla syrup, like a Tyranny's, to make it sweet? You can all make whatever you want. I've had it. <laughs> You're not going to make it again? Uh, just made it here. Up. Okay. Send it back to Iran. Has a little bit of an aftertaste to it. Huh? It has a little bit of an aftertaste to it. Tastes like you sprayed too much perfume in it all of a sudden. White diamond. There you go. It just tastes like vanilla. Like vanilla? It's that moment when somebody has too much on and you accidentally opened your mouth and you're like, I what it was. We all agree on one thing. It's different. It is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it has a you know nice consistency. It does. It's it very tastes. velvety it's smooth. Yeah. Yeah. It can, it, you and I both keep tasting it. Yeah. Now this is what you call pulling a rabbit out of a hat. The reason you do this is it's a very good lesson today because you experiment with new things. Uh, this could have been the biggest oh. hit that ever came along. Uh, so it's it's it was worth the experiment to see. You know, if you want to pursue it or never make it again, um, not, it's not time wasted. So do that in your own store. Uh, if someone recommends some crazy idea, you know, give it a try. I will say this, it's growing, right? I will say saffron stains white. It does? Yeah. Oh, it's on your shoes? It's creamy smooth. It is creamy smooth. Crazy question. Are some states that have not as crazy marijuana. as the flavor? Yeah, they have legalized marijuana. <laughs> marijuana, <laughs> marijuana yes, they are. Yeah, they we're, seeing, we're seeing a lot of. Well, it's legal here in Florida. Yeah, to do it. You can put marijuana into ice cream. Absolutely. There is a little fluke in the law, which I absolutely love, and if I had written it myself, I'd be proud. <laughs> and that is, you cannot transport it across state lines. So if you get famous, like one of my customers is for marijuana ice cream in Tampa. You can't ship it to Georgia. You have to build another ice cream plant and another Emory Thompson machine in Georgia <laughs> in order to make it. Okay. And uh, that's a great law. Yeah. Yeah. I sell more machines. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it is popular. Uh, it was going for $25 a pint, which I think is a bit, bit steep. But people who are buying those type of products, the gummy bears and yeah. the other things, they don't care about the price. Uh, but yeah, it's being done. It was a big, big fad. Uh, I'd say a year and a half ago, and I have not gotten, I judge everything by phone calls. I haven't gotten any calls on, I got one uh, in, I think, August on, uh, you know, putting cannabis into uh, ice cream. Okay. But it can be done, and in most places it's legal, and uh, there's not a lot of uh, legal hassles behind it except for transporting it across state lines. Okay. I thought just medical marijuana was, was legal here, but... Yes. But it would be, I, that's what you would, you would purchase your cannabis yeah. from a legal means, medical. Yeah. Right. Put it, it but, it's like, it, but it's no different than the gummy bears. Right, exactly. It's, it's yeah. just ingesting it in a different form. Right. And that's what they allow. You decided to try this. You have it shipped from Iran. Comes to your house. You look at it. You do a little research like this lady did. You grind it up. You add it to ice cream. And you make it, and whoa, it's the greatest thing in the world. Now what do you do at $150 for a, a quarter ounce? You charge $130 for a scoop. No, you can't. <laughs> so it's good that we didn't like it. <laughs>
<laughs> but Steve had a great point. If you want to make vanilla chocolate strawberry for the rest of your life, go ahead. But if you want to stretch a little bit like I did with this, like I did with Slambuka, you don't know. Eventually you'll come out with some winners. I've got many winners. So play. You know, it's so easy with these machines. Just play. Just get some mix. Add stuff. Whatever, whatever floats your boat. It cost you a few dollars and uh, you had fun doing it. Uh, and you never know. And you never know you that never it might not know. be the next big hit. You know, I didn't think that making lavender ice cream with chocolate chips uh, would be good. Correct. Because you can't get past the name. You know, I'm sorry, but real men don't eat lavender ice cream. That's all there is to it. Until you try it, and then you say, whoa, this stuff's really good. You know, can we call it something else? But uh, no, it's just lavender with chocolate chips in it. Couldn't be better. Lavender syrup from uh, Tarani. Um, uh, makes a syrup, which is, is terrific. Very simple. Uh, as soon as Christy gets back, we're <laughs> going to make our last flavor, and we'll also have a, a tour of the factory. Uh, the last flavor is going to be the banana split ice cream, and Christy's going to use three and a half quarts of dairy blend, two pounds of ripe bananas, 32 ounces of maraschino scary. Maraschino scaries, maraschino, I, I, my own typing, cherries, and two ounces of vanilla extract. You have some saffron caught in your tongue there. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, plus Hershey syrup uh, that she's going to swirl in as she's taking the ice cream out, and chopped peanuts for a, a, a topping. Anybody, that's why we're making it last, because it's got the uh, peanuts in it. Anybody have a peanut allergy? Do we have to clear the airplane because someone's going to eat a bag of peanuts? Can I ask about the Hershey syrup? Have you ever tried like just like a hot fudge and warmed it up so that it went in easily? Or what do you do if you want to? That would work fine too. It would. Um, I use the Hershey syrup especially for my coffee ice cream because my coffee ice cream is very simple. It's uh, uh, Taster's Choice, which is very bitter. And I'm not turning it into coffee, I'm just pouring it right in the machine. And the Hershey's takes away the bitterness. This is just going to add a little chocolate kick. So I'll turn this over to Christy and she'll tell you what she's doing. I don't know, because I don't have the recipe, so you guys have to walk me through it. There you go. Three and a half quarts of dairy mix. Well, they can walk me through it, right? Yeah. You all have it, and then uh, you ex instruct Christy how to do it. All right, what am I doing next? Two and a half pounds of right one Oh, guys, I'm super excited. I've never put bananas in the machine before. I know you said earlier not to put the sugar directly in because it, um, it'll mess the blades up. Is there any other things that you would suggest that we would be like, oh, let me try this that would be bad for me? Gravel. <laughs> Are you making gravel ice cream now? <laughs> Asphalt heaven. Uh, no, sugar is the only one. Sugar is just like sandpaper. Okay. Anything so, else, the machine can take it. You're two, right? two, two or pounds. two pounds? It's all right. Nobody saw that. <laughs> Nobody saw it. Put it in. Five second rule. All right. Woohoo! <laughs> Got a little stuck there. <laughs> hey, if Ozzy Osbourne can eat a bat, I can eat a banana. <laughs> oh. This is exciting. I've never put Imagine bananas in there. Banana in? No. Uh, that one got a little stuck. I've never made banana ice cream. I've made, I try to make like different things. Now please note she's not using her fingers. If a piece of banana gets stuck up there, you don't put your finger into spinning machinery. You use a, a soft rubber tip spatula. <laughs> Look at that. It just slides right in there. It's fun, isn't it? <laughs> it's like a pretty woman when she goes to cut the snails. You know, she's like slippery little suckers. <laughs> no. Uh, because everything else in there is white. Or at least the, uh, the dairy mix is. And the browner they are, the sweeter they are. So it's important to get overripe bananas. If you want to make a great banana product. Okay, same and concept. And if you want to have bananas ripen faster, <coughs> put them in a paper bag with an apple. With an apple? Yes. Yeah. Why? 
the Apple, uh, <coughs> you know this, right? But it lets off uh, some sort of gas. Yeah. And that will uh, ripen your banana. How many ounces? So that would be two of these, but let's do one and see. Yeah? Nah, do them. Huh? Now try it first. You're not draining them, huh? No, I use the juice. That's that's just water in there. We like it. Okay. It's juice. It's flavor. Oh. Let's see. Let's give it a little bit. Let's pull a Jeff. I always laugh and say, um, Jeff likes to make love with the machine, let it run for a long time and then taste it. I don't ever do that. I'm a, a wing it and turn it on and if it sucks, it sucks. I think that's go? good. You wanna try it? Sure. Yeah, the cherries is just right. Good? Yeah. Okay, nice so you're going to have to mark it nice to just flavor. 16 ounces of cherries. All right, we're ready. Oh, we could still turn it on. Remember, it's not going to do for anything for the extraction. first four minutes. It's, it's chilling down, but it's not turning it into ice cream yet. So you've Look, got Jeff. four minutes. They do this because it's my $100 vanilla. <laughs> if it was theirs, they'd be measuring it. <laughs> That's Lockhead Vanilla. Actually, it's, I think, down to about $85. And that's a, uh, a two-fold vanilla, meaning that it's two times as strong. And it's a natural vanilla. So it's, it's terrific. Impressive. Pure vanilla, uh, which I don't, know the, I don't know any taste difference between natural and pure. Pure vanilla is still up around $600 a bottle. I mean, it's, it's not affordable to use. We talk about... Don't worry about the cost. Well, at $600, it's, it's kind of like overusing your saffron at $150. Bucks. But look, I mean, like, look at that. Like, Wall of shame over there. You can't see it. So I went ahead and um, pre-chopped the peanuts in the Ninja before and uh, cleaned everything just in case anybody did have a peanut allergy so they're contained and I could just whisk them out of here. Um, you can add the peanuts right into the machine if you want to have that banana, cherry, and peanut flavor. Um, of course, you know, if you make a banana split different or if you've had one that was really good, you can add anything that you want in there. Um, I am going to take, that's everything I should have put in there, right? If you want to put pineapple, I mean, <laughs> I would use crushed. I would use crushed pineapple. So we're going to do it. So there's two ways you can do like a variegate. Uh, Steve likes to take the syrup and kind of just squirt it in there and just as it's coming out upon extraction. And then there's Jeff's way where he'll take a little splash and mix. He'll put in some of his variegate juice, whatever he's using, whether it's cherry or Hershey's or any liquid gold he's using. And then he'll layer it and then he'll fold it. Um, if you want to see that specific video, you can email me and I can send you the link to that so you can watch Jeff how he does his variegate or I believe it is the cheesecake. So type in Emory Thompson cheesecake ice cream and you'll see his video pull up with the variegate and how he does that. So this doesn't have a super high sugar content so this will freeze a lot faster than the mango and the chocolate raspberry would. Anybody have questions? No? No? Okay. How many would have added the peanuts into the machine? Yeah. I think it's good to have a topping too. You know, once again, peanut is a very well-known allergy, so that's your choice if you do want to have that in your store. Um, you know, make it known on your door. I would definitely do that, that there are nuts inside the facility. Um, some customers I've talked to, they've chosen not to even have any type of nut in their store just to make it a nut-free nut -free environment for those. Um, so that's your personal choice. But we're going to do it as a topping, which is against Jeff's rules. He only sticks a pretzel stick in it. But it looks pretty <laughs> as a topping. It's nice to have a finished product. Remember, you did the bacon. you got to go back and look at the videos. Christy did the bacon. Pickle. The dill pickle bacon Italian ice. Uh, it's good. Uh, 
dill pickle. But Mickey, uh, Christy's husband, who also works here, uh, is the best bacon cooker on earth. Every piece is absolutely flat and perfect. And um, so Christy finished off each cup of the dill pickle Italian ice with a big old piece of bacon sticking out of it. And what people did, which we didn't expect, is they used the piece of bacon to scoop the Italian ice. So it didn't matter what the pickle tasted like, you had bacon. Believe it or not, everybody really did like that. So if you wanted to see the audience reaction on that one, it's dill pickle Italian ice on uh, YouTube. So you can watch the audience reaction when they eat it, just like you guys did. It, yes, it was. So Clausen pickles, you know, from the refrigerated section, those were the best ones. So you grind those up and the juice. So you did the juice from the, the ground up pickles and then water and then your sugar. I know, everybody looks a little eh, but it's actually a huge seller, believe it or not, in like places like Texas. Um, you know, in Oklahoma, where I lived for 10 years, uh, all these kids would run around with a pickle pop. So it was frozen pickle juice left over, and it's great for athletes, you know, like at ball fields and, and skating rinks. And these kids would walk around with the big jar of pickle juice, and then once the jar uh, pickles were gone, they pour the juice into uh, little cups and stick them in the freezer and sell them for 25 cents a piece. And, these kids go around and lick them all day long. We didn't have that in the South Bronx. <laughs> it's good stuff. <laughs> I'm a pickle junkie, so when I order food, it's extra pickles with more pickles with extra pickles. So. You asked about the pickles. They were dill. Uh, they were not the uh, sweet gherkins. Yeah. But you got the sweetness from the sugar. Yes? I've got a question on something that you talked about before with the freezers. You know, if you use the chest freezers instead of a uh, you know, bigger freezer for storage, you said six degrees for ice cream and six or sixteen, I think, for ice. For, yes, uh, if you want to serve like Jeff does, your ice is an ice cream out of chest freezers instead of buying a bona fide dipping cabinet. Uh, the serving temperature for ice cream is approximately six, maybe as high as eight Fahrenheit plus, uh, and ices are about sixteen degrees. Um, are you do they typically, uh, They're ten below. are they regulated that closely? I mean, can you adjust them to that close of a, of a temperature? No. Okay. No. no, that's they're, what they're, I thought. They're a scale of one to five and they're very erratic. Uh, I'm not going to take all your time. This is a little device, you can call me about this. Uh, this is like putting Christmas lights up on your uh, front porch. You can take a normal chest freezer that goes to ten below, put this probe into it, and plug the box into here and this into the wall and now just like your Christmas lights which come on at dusk and go off at two in the morning uh, this has got a thermostat so the power is going to it heading to 10 below but I've got it set to when it hits 16 degrees kill the power and then when it goes up to 17 degrees turn the power back on 32 bucks at Amazon I can't sell them because they're not UL and I can't uh, approve them, but I can tell you where to buy it. But instead of buying a $2,000 dipping cabinet, you can go cheap and use a chest freezer and adjust the temperature in anything you want. What, what do they call that? A strange name. Rain, oh, Ink Bird. Ink I, Bird. I am. B-I-R-D. $32 approximately at Amazon. You're going to see fancier models that go up into the $40, $50 range. Don't buy them. They're for beer and uh, they're, they're too complicated and you don't need the features. You were saying ink, I-N-C? I-N-K. I-N-K, yeah. bird? Yeah. Like a bird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like saying happy cucumber. You know, the, the two don't mean anything. Yeah. Ink, bird. But you can call and I'll tell you about this. Anything else? Nope. Um, so, Fun fact, uh, I have the little CB200 at home in my kitchen and I'm always developing something new. A customer asked me, have I made this before? And I said, no, but I'll do it and I'll let you know. Um, I've done that quite a few times. So the most recent one I had was, have I made beer ice cream? No, I have not. So whenever we have leftover mix, uh, I'll take it home and I will give it a whirl. I'm gonna try different kinds of beer, dark feel beer, a light beer, um, I don't know. So I might use it for the February seminar, I might not. Um, but I have a lot of fun and then that's where the, I get frustrated because I leave the gate open and it's kind of, <laughs> I'll pour it in there and it goes running out and then I slam it closed and I stand there for the two seconds and just, 
you know, get mad at myself because I left the gate open and it all just poured out. Um, so many times as I've done it, I still do it. My little trivia is if you're on the fence about opening up a store and if you're concerned about us heading into uh, tougher times, recessionary times, I can give you the 119 year history of Emory Thompson condensed. We do very well in recessionary times, which means that my customers do very well in recessionary times. And the simple reason is, <clears throat> if everybody's cutting back and everything's costing more, uh, you still have to entertain the family. And if McDonald's is too expensive for a family of four to go to, a movie is just Maybe completely uh, impossible. But you still have to take the kids somewhere. You have to do something with them. Disney's up to $125 for a day. Insane. But you can take them out on Friday or Saturday to go get some ice cream. Grandma can take them out or dad can take them out. But some family member can take the kids out. It's a treat. You're going out to a, it's, you know, what we used to say, a destination location. Uh, and you're getting something fun. So ice cream parlors do very, very well, going all the way back to when my father and uncle started running the, the business during the Great Depression. So it's, it's all positive. My goal is going to see you, have you spend as little money as possible and then grow into the business and um, you know, as money is available, you'll get larger equipment to cut down on your labor or give you ability to expand. But it's, it's a basically recession-proof uh, business and you're going to do extremely well. I, I, I can literally guarantee it. Our success rate is in the 90 percentile. Uh, it's not my success rate, it's my customers. They all do extremely well, and it's ready. Oh. Ready? We're going to slow this down. Are we blocking your camera? Okay. Nope. Okay. Oops. Oops. You gonna smush, 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 smush? No. Yeah. 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 Hershey's chocolate is a uh, milk chocolate, oh, so like it's, like it's just the right, right sweetness ready? for a product like this. <laughs> it, it works out great. That's good. Okay. Let's do the next one. Oh boy. You're not Never doing nice. anything, are you? Yeah. I'm. I'm hosting. I'm Jack McMahon. that sound of the speed going up? That's the sound of nobody else has this but me. That's about it. Okay. Ta-da! You want to turn that so they can see it, Jeff? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Of course. <laughs> it is. There was a little bit left over. You don't think I'm going to let go to waste, do you? Oh, you too, huh? <laughs> cool. that's, that's banana. That's excellent. That is really excellent. Yeah? Mm-hmm. It's got great banana flavor. What about cherry? Is it enough cherry? Um, yes, as a background. Okay. The banana is the primary. Really good. Would you have slipped out a jar of cherry in or no? I wouldn't. I, I don't know. I would. I don't want to get overly sweet. The cherry's just on the top of the banana. <laughs> yeah, you can get out the top. I would probably put both jars in. Well, probably drain one jar and then use the juice and the cherries from the one, the other. Well, we'll, let, we'll see what the crowd says as they yeah. taste it. Everybody want peanuts sprinkled on the top of theirs? I don't. No. <coughs> How many no? Yes. Just, Just two? two? Okay. So I'll leave two without. If the peanuts were in the ice, <coughs> you would eat it. Yeah. <coughs> I'm just not a huge peanut. Fan. No, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Because I would have put the peanuts in yeah, the ice. Yeah, okay. 
But I'm not a peanut fan, so I wouldn't have eaten it. <laughs> well, everybody raise your hand who cares. <laughs> sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. <laughs> on behind the scenes here, and I don't think we're going to swing the camera this far, but in here are a few uh, you can make ice cream nuts, there's uh, fruit in here, a little saffron, from, a, little saffron <laughs> a lot of saffron, uh, because we poured all the rinse water through this. Oh. The important thing is that's, that's got a little weight to it. Now, if you didn't use a spaghetti colander in your sink, you're going to be calling the plumber every third day because your sink's clogged up. So, I mean, what is this, $1.99, $2.99? Well, I could have made perfectly good ice cream out of that. Yeah, I know you could. <laughs> and you would have called it the kitchen sink. The second That's time it. around? <laughs> Okie dokie. And here it comes. You said no, right? You're welcome. The lady in the front row wanted to see how to uh, clean the machine if you did two completely divergent flavors. So like if we were going to go from this to vanilla, I'm just putting some uh, warm water in here. Need some more cherries. Okay. You're welcome. Hit the screen. My hands are wet. May not work. Make ice cream. Hit homemade because it's a high speed. Hit start. Yeah. And I'm just gonna let that go for 30 seconds, and then I'll drain it out. More peanuts? Yeah, I could do more peanuts. Oh, there's a whole book. But I was thinking, I was like, I'm not going to like it. The money is irrelevant. <laughs> well, and there's a thing, you know, you can put the peanuts right in, you can leave them out, you can. And turn that off. Mm hmm. Can't double dunk. Folks, the lady in the front row asked, is there an instruction book with the machine? There's not only an instruction book with the machine, which is a real book. Everything I buy now, including my car, has it on a screen, and I have to go looking for it. We give you a real instruction book. Uh, this infinite overrun control says, get help. And there, we have a series of videos, uh, and uh, it explains how to put the blades in properly, how to rinse things out. Mike, what are some of the other things that are in there? We've got four different categories. You've got uh, setup, cleaning, maintenance, troubleshooting. And There's actually a guy in the machine. Yeah, you heard him. Yeah. Yeah, it's AI. Um, and all that's right in there, so you can get us until 9 o'clock at night, but if you need something at 2 in the morning, why are you up at 2 in the morning? But you can get it right here on the screen. You'll see this hand go through the motions. That hand is insured by Lloyd's of London. I don't know why. And it's Christie's. <laughs> is there an electrical It really is. It is, really. For this? Is 220. There a, is that an electrical 220. Yeah. Yes, it may, needs electricity. Except for this one, it's a 115, so it can plug into any normal outlet, just like your toaster or your microwave. Um, just be sure you don't have anything else on that same circuit or outlet with that. And this is what I have a lot of fun with, trying to develop all these flavors. How about last questions before we go take a tour of the factory? And that will conclude things for today. Breaker do you usually take it to? Depends on the size of the machine. This one's going to take a 40 amp breaker. That's going to take a 20 amp breaker. The uh, 44 quart, the world's largest production batch freezer, is going to be a three phase 220 and it's going to take a 50 amp breaker. Uh, that's, that's half your house, if not more. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, after you finish that up, if you want to gather up your papers, we'll go for a tour. And um, I thank you all for coming. Can we come back in here after? To grab your papers. Sure. Oh.